quality signal from my capture card to, to Twitch. So give us just a minute here, folks, just a minute. I know that things are looking more than a little different around here of late, but looks like we might be good. Yes. Yes, we are. Lovely. Um, I'm waiting until Twitch gives me a confirmation that the quality of our stream is is fine. That there aren't any major glaring issues. The video quality could be a little better, couldn't it? Maybe? Kind of, sort of? Hold on, let me... Let's try going somewhere else. I'm sorry we're having to start the stream with some tedium, but, uh, hi, by the way, um, I'm actually using a capture card like a real streamer this time around, meaning, in addition to, uh, being able to record more or less anything I want, provided the game works, oi, that's a bit loud, and constantly having to fiddle with settings because I'm good at my job, um, I get to use my my webcam, so you can actually see me. I'm sorry. Um, I look kind of like death warmed over today because, again, quarantine has just been so so rough. But I uh, plan on getting a haircut and a shave uh, in the next couple of days, which will have me looking far more presentable. Don't you worry. So, yes, welcome. I think we are now properly live. So, yes, welcome ladies and gentlemen back to Dark Souls 3. We are rapidly nearing the end of this playthrough. We've got the tail end of one DLC, Super Bosses, and the uh, entirety of the second DLC, which I haven't played a whole lot of before. I also understand this isn't the world's most flattering camera angle, but... Uh, also, planning on fixing that sometime soon. Um, let me just... I'm trying to get in the position where the, the short cord on my headphones won't just strangle me. There we are. Finally. Okay. Enough messing about. Everything appears to be good. By... By biometric. Yep, everything seems to be working just fine. Good. Very good. Let me know if there's any issues with audio balance or the like, or video quality as we continue. Again, this is brand new technology to me, I'm not the best at using it, so we, we want to make sure we don't, you know, sacrifice quality for convenience in the form of the capture card. So today we've got quite a few things on the books. Ladies and gents, we've got, uh, apologies if you're hearing, like, Discord messages, I can probably open my own, I'm sorry, again, this is, this is all brand new. There we go. Hey, MC, welcome, welcome to the stream. I, I hope everything looks and sounds all right. Um, aside from myself, I know, I know I look like, well, somebody who spent six months indoors, unabated. But, um, I do hope everything is looking alright. Let me see what I can do about Discord really quick. Um, settings. Voice and video. No, uh, notifications. Let me just disable all of these sounds. There we go. Sorry, sorry, I know this is a whole lot of awful noise, but... Okay. That ought to silence Discord, effectively. Lovely, lovely. 
MC says probably gonna need to work on the backlight, but it's good otherwise. All right, don't you worry, I got this. There we go. It. I. I am very fortunate to live in an apartment with very, very abundant light, both natural and otherwise. Hope everybody's having a good day thus far. Our, our buddy Exit may join us uh, for, like, voice commentary a bit later on via uh, Discord. But for the time being, we're just going to take care of some housekeeping. You, you may notice a few things um, have changed in the game, not just in my, my streaming setup over the past couple days. Namely, we've got, on the losing side of... 300,000 souls, we have Black Knight armor, and heavens above, I'm using a parrying shield. There is a good reason for all of this, don't you worry. Um, you can see what we're, we're going to be doing is attempting to parry at least a couple of these bosses. Ooh, there's someone with quite the lovely headdress. Um, I was able to farm the Black Knight armor very, very quickly by just killing the Black Knight in Terran Wood over and over again. And I was roaming about with the uh, Serpent Rings equipped, trying to get more unique gear from enemies as well as a ton of souls, which I did. I also uh, wound up gathering two more undead bone shards. It happened that that one great big ball of bones that rolled down the stairs after us in the Catacombs of Carthus smashes into the wall. It doesn't, like, go back and forth, as we would expect, uh, as the, like, second skeleton ball did, and leaves behind a bone shard, and there's a second one underneath the bridge the dragons were guarding in Lothric Castle. So I got both of those, as well as in a little, like, out-of-the-way area that happened to contain, of all things, uh, the shrine to the war god that is used to level up the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant, uh, the Braille Divine Tome of Lothric. A sacred Braille tome from Lothric filled with miracles for use by knights. Uh, it is said that no paladin inside Lothric Castle could fall, owing to the divine protection they enjoyed. Also found this in Farron Woods, the first pyromancy tome we should have found. Uh, it was guarded by giant crabs, though, so of course it uh, was not discovered, because I'm terrified of those things. Spells of the Great Swamp are passed down from master to pupil. Without a master, there is no pupil. But without a pupil, there is also no master. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how the definitions of words work. So first things first, we'll drop off our last pyromancy tome, and it is indeed the last pyromancy tome, as far as I'm aware, with Cornix. Ah, there I am. <laughs> yes, here we are. It's been long indeed. With this, I can teach you more sophisticated pyromancies. Splendid. I can boast I am your tutor a little longer. <laughs> Excellent. And that gives us access to Fire Orb and other, like, more or less basic pyromancies that would still be pretty useful if Do you were playing a pyromancy build, <laughs> which we're not. Hold on one second. I'm noticing, like, with the camera having me just kind of looking off to the side and up and gurning is not the, the world's greatest look. We can, we can fix this. And we're gonna carefully. That wasn't carefully. Carefully. And she says everything can be fixed, but at what cost? If the cost is a few books that I would be very thankful to never have to read again, I I am happy. There we are. This should be a bit better. There we go. You see my, my television's mounted up on the wall and uh having to use a couple ottomans to balance all of my recording equipment. But we're good, we're good. Um, now that we've done that, we drop off the Braille Tome of Lothric with Karina to get some really powerful miracles that we can never oh, use. Champion, do you wish oh, you've brought me a Braille Divine Tome. Now I can tell new tales of miracles. Tales of the greater miracles can be quite the epics. 
what fun we will have. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, she gives us the Blessed Weapon Miracle. This is the same buff that the Lothric Knights apply to their weapons. Uh, increasing attack power and gradually restoring your HP. That's not with every hit. That's just over time, like a health regeneration buff, which is pretty cool. And, uh, man, if, if we had a little bit more faith, I might actually go for that. But alas, we do not. Have a pleasant, I pray for you. So, before we uh, carry on, we are going to level up like there is no tomorrow, because, see, I, I kind of noticed something. Uh, watching uh, my friend Seth play through Dark Souls 1 blind, as well as playing through Bloodborne, and now this Welcome for the first time in name. years. Uh, in Dark Souls 1 and 2, like, your vitality or your vigor, the, the amount of health you had or the amount of points you dumped into the health stat didn't really matter a whole lot, because if you had sufficiently heavy armor or a solid shield or what have you, most of the damage you would take from certain enemies' attacks, unless if they were like elemental attacks, would be ameliorated. So as long as you get stronger armor or you reinforce it over the course of the game, uh, as long as you've got like maybe 20-ish points in health, you're fine. Uh, Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3, that is not the case whatsoever. In Bloodborne, I know for a fact, the amount of health restored by blood vials scales with the amount of health you have, as do a lot of your physical defenses, I want to say. Um, and in Dark Souls 3, there's a small correlation between health and stamina, but there's then also the fact that uh, armor don't go quite as far as it used to. I feel like the game's still a little loud. Here, let me, let me take care of that. There we go. That's a that's a bit better. MC says, or if you spend souls in anything, you increase defense in Dark Souls 1. That's very true. So, what we're gonna do... We have seven beautiful levels. I'm thinking... Five in Vigor, two in Stamina. We're going to need it. Yep, that'll do. Oh, look at that beautiful health bar. That's what I'm talking about. Now, before we carry on, we've actually got quest lines to take care of. You know, quest lines, those things that were thrown in our face throughout the entire game, but we kind of never really did, aside from what was required to get the Londor ending. Yeah, we're gonna do two of those to get some pretty cool gear, as well as, I think, a ring that's really gonna help us out. First things first, though, we've got some bone shards to burn. Yes. Yes. Estus plus ten. Or nine. One or the other. Anyhow, uh, what we want to do is head to the undead settlements. Uh, dilapidated bridge would probably do the job. Yeah. MC says, I've dug into why people recommend Dark Souls 1's strength and magic build. The reason is that you actually receive more souls overall, making that build really overpowered overpowered, and that's because you overkill easily. Do you actually get more souls if you, like, deal damage in excess of an enemy's, like, total HP value? I didn't know that. Something really cool you'll notice is throughout the rest of the world, aside from, I want to say, Irithyll and Archdragon Peak, once uh, you've slain three of the four Lords of Cinder, the dark sign eclipses the sun, you know, more or less everywhere. Originally, like, uh, and a lot of this is still coded into the game's files, I think, or at least the files of network tests, uh, there were supposed to be a bunch of different skyboxes associated with different magical events, or uh, I should say magical phenomena in PvP events and things like that, most of which were removed before the game was uh, released, which is quite a shame. We'll want to use the Lothric Knight shield, because we can. If you remember, Black Knight armor is really good. It's uh, it's not quite as heavy as it was in the first game either. Great machete, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and throw on some more appropriate rings. I'm a big fan of the Karthus Mill ring. Seth says, oh my god, what is that? Oh, welcome! Welcome to the stream, Seth. Yeah, no, uh, forgive me for looking like death warmed over today. As I said, I'm 
really feeling the effects of quarantine. Uh, I'm in fact scheduled to get like a proper hairdo tomorrow. Um, and MC says players who can overkill an enemy will gain a bonus of 20% souls. You must be able to do greater than 150% of the target's max HP in one attack. Christ on a bike! Yeah, you're you're gonna need a strength build for that. That ain't happening here. Also, anyone who wants to join, like, uh, for voice commentary in Discord is more than welcome to. Again, I've, I've been waiting on Exit, but I, I suppose he's predisposed, or indisposed. Um, what's the other ring we're going to want for this? Uh, we, we don't really need the Estus ring anymore with a flask plus ten. Um, hmm. 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 He says, imagine squads for every failed dice roll in Blades. Oh man, none of us would be able to stand for a week afterward. Well, none of these are like fantastic for what I'm going with, but... But... Boost attacks as long as attacking persists. Yeah, the Pontiff's right eye might be a... No, no, Aldrich's Ruby, recovering HP from critical attacks, because our first boss battle today is going to rely on those probably in excess of what a good little player should. You guys remember Cirrus, right? She was the uh, fairly polite nun, or, or like sort of battle priestess in the silver armor who appeared in Firelink Shrine out of nowhere? and disappear as quick as she came. Well, her quest line revolves around assisting her with a couple of reasonably difficult encounters. Uh, then, afterward, we're going to complete uh, Ringfinger Leonard's quest line. The Bloodborne looking guy in the Plague Doctor mask, who really wants us to invade other players. If I'm correct, his quest line is just a single battle that isn't too bad, and gets us something we really need. Hello, dog. Dogs are the worst. Let me know if the, the game is too loud, by the way. I've, I've been wrestling with audio balance for some time. We actually got um, one of the spiked maces the evangelists used last night. It was incredible. It's a bit too late in the game to be a viable weapon. So that says it's perfect so far. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll see how it is in a boss fight. Oh, there's going to be a lot of screaming on my end, so don't worry. I'll be louder too. Now, if you come back to the Curse Rotted Great Woods boss arena, or the sort of... Uh, hallway leading to it, you can see a sign requesting cooperation, which allows us to enter Cirrus's world. Answer Cirrus of the Sunless Realm's call for cooperation and be summoned as a phantom? Yep. She's calling us in for something of a mini-boss fight in her world. MC says, I'd say your voice is slightly muffled by the game sounds when attacking. Okay, give me one second. That might do the trick. This might make it a little too quiet, but... In fact, let's see if I can't. There we go. Thank you. So look who we're fighting! Finally found you. It's her evil grandfather. Just as I promised, Grandpa. Knight Hodrick again. You know, the crazy pyromancer who can heal himself until the end of time? Now we've got to fight him in the flesh, but we're fighting him together, and she is no slouch. He strengthened himself with, uh, I think that's Power Within. Uh, 
Oh, he's in stance now. And he's, of course, still a master of healing. But I'm a master of injury, so we're good. Again, remember the little orb generated by warmth will actually heal us as well, so it's not all bad. And she's actually keeping him on the ropes really well. And by the way, yeah, he said, or she said grandfather, so he's a fairly elderly man and still able to throw down really well. Oh, got him though, in short order now that we've got some help. Duty fulfilled, I'll say. I love the design of her armor. Seriously, check that out. <laughs> MC says you killed Grandpa, you monster. Well, to be fair, Grandpa tried to kill us first, and that's after we started working for him. Hey, Shiver, welcome to the stream, man. Glad you're here. And also, Seth, thank you for the promotion on your page. Really appreciate that. Okay, so we're done here, right? Well, in the Undead Settlement, anyway, yeah. Seth says that Grandpa can out-squat me. Hey, when when I went uh, to the gym on a regular basis back in my hometown before, you know, the world fell apart, uh, the most capable, like, regular client in the entire gym for, for my entire tenure there uh, was a, an elderly gentleman who had, like, recently entered retirement. He was incredible and could, like, push himself with really strenuous cardio and strength training for, like, you know, damn near two hours at a time. He was a remarkable individual. So I'm actually surprised we were able to do that as easily as we were. I remember the second Hodrick fight being a lot harder than that, but I, I mean, I guess to be fair, we are doing it at a significantly later point in the game than you're expected to, uh, because, you know, the game kind of would like you to either stumble upon these things right after you clear the areas they're relevant in, or pay enough attention to follow the character's quest line instead of bumbling around. So. I don't know, but here she is, meaning we can continue the story. Oh, there you are. I'm afraid I've involved you in my affairs over a little promise at that. My sincerest thanks for your assistance. At last, my grandfather will rest in peace, and I can die. Oh. But there is one last, may I take a vow, to serve you as a knight. Absolutely. Oh, I am most grateful. I Cirrus do hear by Seth says she better give us some good items. Oh, she does. Or she lets us access some good items. My loyalty shall never waver. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. If I may ever This also unlocks her as like an assistant in certain boss battles. MC says, I wonder if walking for about seven kilometers across an hour and a half and singing through the promenade is considered cardio or madness. Wow. I don't think there's a distinction between cardio and madness, and I speak as somebody who has, like, a pretty solid elliptical machine right over there you may or may not be able to see. Seth says, thanks for killing my family member. Will you let me be your slave? Yep, sounds legit. Well, she was a member of the Blades of the Dark Moon, I think, so they were kind of members of ideologically opposed religious uh, organizations, but yeah, no, no, I get it. It's it's weird. It's Dark Souls. It's real weird. So, never did give us the, never did buy the white sign soapstone. Better change that. Hold on. Let me, let me make sure I've not missed anything in her quest line. Because there's one more one more step we can take. Oh yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, I'm in that. Sorry. 
Jesus. Welcome, Exit. <laughs> oh. Excuse me, sorry, sorry, it was no, me. No worries, no worries. That that's my lovely wife. It is the first thing I do when I hook up on mic. She just goes in the goddamn mic. You, oh, I can't take you anywhere. Oops. Bye. Yeah, I love you too. Bye. Bye. Go burp somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got Brady in stitches. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's how that, that's how I always introduce my wife. So this is my wife. Brap. That's how that goes. Hey, Brady. Hi, chat. How are you guys doing? Doing wonderfully, sir. And yourself? <laughs> yeah, doing great. Sorry for the rude entrance, but yeah. Oh, no, no. You're like fine. I... Oh, I'm good. Okay. So, um, we have just killed Hodrick as a part of Cirrus's quest line and are on our way to get his gear. All right. Which should be out here, I think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah um... I think it's near the grave. Yeah, so something I like noticed off stream that i've neglected to tell everybody about is when you complete certain npcs quest lines and allow them to rest at peace you can find their gear or weapons or the like at headstones uh in and around the cemetery of ash so like when we completed hawkwood the uh crestfallen warriors quest i was able to find his little dinky shield at a headstone near the dogs But where is, where's Hawkwood? All right, let me make sure, sorry, just got a Discord notification. We're good, we're good. Um, Seth said, to be honest, I thought I accidentally had a weird video running in the background and try to figure out where <laughs> it came from. <laughs> what on earth kind of video? Yeah, well, it's Seth. You never know. <laughs> okay, so Hodrick's buried somewhere out here. Uh, usually, they're always around the shrine itself, not like past Udix Gundir's boss arena, right? So you killed... Oh, that was Sirius's quest line you were doing, right? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't able to uh, remember her quest line was a thing in time to help with the uh, Pontiff's Watchdog, but we did kill Hodrick. You might want to go back to that uh, uh, bit of hollows. Okay. Because I just looked it up. It, is, it should be on his corpse. And uh, it says here that you might need to reload the area for the set to appear. So you might want to run back and see if it's uh, over there somewhere. Zephas, did that corpse just slide off the screen gently? It's it's a Dark soul, so probably, yes. And top ten burp entrances. I... I genuinely hope there aren't enough oh, on record shit. for a top ten. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. The sunset set. Um, it's pretty uh, did good, you get it? actually. Yes, sir. Seth says you never know what Watch Mojo does. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so it says then. Okay, after that... Okay, so... His shield should be um, at Firelink Shrine. And then, uh... Cirrus Corpse will be as well. And we can acquire her phenomenal armor set. Uh, from the grave as well. That's it. I'm doing her quest line, then we're doing Leonard's, because I'm pretty sure you get a really awesome item for completing it. We've also got, like, some quality armor this time around. So I might be able to take a hit without just crumpling in half. That's not the Dragon Slayer armor, is it? No, uh, this is a Black Knight armor with the Shadow Gauntlets. Oh, yeah. Lothric Knight shield. This is this is pretty solid for a lighter character. Pretty tanky, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I also just dumped over, or almost 400,000 souls worth of levels into Vigor because I was sick of crumpling in one hit to just about everything. <laughs> and, correct me if I'm wrong, it might not even be reflected in your stats, but like in Bloodborne, there is a pretty significant boost to your defenses 
uh, if you like just dump points into vigor and stamina, right? Oh yeah, you it will it will show you in Dark Souls Three that you if you put points in vigor, that it, it will show that uh, your defenses go up. Not all of them, but most of them. Yeah, like a lot of the uh, a lot of the elemental resistances, especially. No, actually, the elemental resistances are more on based on the strength, int, and dex. So if you put points in the yeah, that, that that's what I was, what I thought it was weird as well. Um, but it's more in uh, a physical, I think physical and poison resistance. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, physical poison, uh, and of course bleed and frostbite as well. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And frostbite actually really matters here. So we get the sunless what? talisman, the sunlight shield. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the the first boss on our agenda today uh, excels in frostbite status. Seth says, if you ever decide to stream Witcher 3, I'll join you as a commentator. That would be lovely. I would also, uh, if you'd be interested, love to have you around for our blind stream of Cyberpunk in a couple months. Yeah, I won't be able to attend because I will be playing Cyberpunk myself. <laughs> I think everybody will. Yeah. Like, it uh, looks really good. Everybody. Now we got Cirrus's Talisman, which is, I think, for a faith build, really good, right? Like, let's uh, see. Yeah. Actually, it is, yeah. Yeah, look at that scaling, like, uh, base scaling. That's really good. It's actually the best that you can get. Is it? Yeah. Wow. It's uh, it's recommended for all faith builds. To, like, get that. Oh, that's right. Seth says, guys, we can co-op stream. Yes, definitely. You should. Although, I do want to come back as a commentator when you do the Marvel Avengers stuff. Oh, yes, sir. Absolutely. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's going to be so bad. <laughs> it's going to be so bad. You hear, you hear it here first, folks. The stream will be crappy, but at least we will be here. Look, they, they know where they are. Of course it will. <laughs> but I'm a walking Marvel uh, Marvel dictionary and encyclopedia, so it should be good. Oh, yeah, no, no, me too. I'm more of a DC guy, but I have loved the it's okay. It's your, it's forgiven. books since I was a kid. All right. Yeah, me too. Seth says commentator for Avengers. This sucks. That sucks. All sucks. All sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for I'm just gonna comment on the lore and then that's not like comment on the gameplay. Right. No, it would. So look at that Tony Stark fly. It's fucking hilarious. Did you uh, did you play Marvel Ultimate Alliance three? Yeah. No. No. Not free. Free was for the Switch. I don't have a Switch. Yeah, and it's uh. Compared to the others, man, it's a little rough. I really liked the second one. Yeah, me too. Um, Loved okay. it. Let me see. Uh, I'm looking up Leonard's quest line now to make sure we've done everything properly. Yes, we have. Uh, okay, yeah. So it's time for us now to cross over to the dark side and work with Rosaria's fingers for a minute. It's the name of the Dark Wraith Covenant. I don't know if I ever pointed that out in this game. So we... So there's yeah. not, like, unfortunate phrasing there. It's it's like the Dark Wraith Covenant. It's called Rosaria's Fingers. Hence, uh, we had Yellowfinger Hazel, uh, Longfinger Kirk, and Ringfinger Leonard. Mm -hmm. And Rosaria is believed to be, or it's theorized by some fans to be like a reincarnation of a goddess from the first game, but I don't really see that. I've heard that story as well. Like, like, this looks like a creature from the Abyss who was locked up here by Gwen's deacons. Now, what we need to do is find Leonard somewhere around here, because he's, he's gone. He's left the building. He's left the shrine, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Seth. Seth says they made Stone Tony Stark's jeans have a button on the right, and it clearly needs to be on the left, because in coming... Uh, 1337, his button was kidnapped and Captain America helped him get it back. But Hawkeye screwed up and sewed it back on wrong. I I kind of want not that kind of storyline now. I'm gonna shout stuff like, it's not canon! Oh, wait, is this... Oh, yeah, this thing is technically an enemy, so we have to... Oh, it was like the reincarnated form of Ringfinger Hazel. Okay. I guess we do have to go back to the shrine, talk to Leonard, exhaust his dialogue, he'll head over here, then we get sucked into a battle, and once we complete the battle, we can get something really, really good. I think. Well, I... 
So I think we can. Um, hold on. There's a certain ring I'm looking for. Is this where on earth is it? Oh no. What is it we're looking for? Sorry, I thought if we complete Leonard's quest line, we get my favorite ring in the series, but nope, nope, we've got to do something I have deliberately avoided until now. Oh, here, here we go. Time to fight, uh, the, the Pontiff's guard dogs and, uh, oh, unlock dude. the final base game covenant. Oh, I, I really probably want to be on, offline for this, but... So, uh, yeah, do you guys remember the giant, like, deformed wolf thing that attacked us on the bridge into Irithyll, right? The one that I was so proud I was able to kill before it would ambush us in, like, the moat later? Well, if you want to get the game's final, like, launch covenant, you need to kill two of them at once. Well, kind of, sort of, at once, uh, if we do this properly, in quick succession. Oh, poor Seth. And now yeah. you're playing Dark Souls 1. Seth says, for a while I didn't play any game that had wolf killing in them, out of principle. I was a weird kid. No, no, that's fine. I, uh... I think the only game I ever, like, just stopped playing or, or refused to play out of, like, uh, moral conviction... Was It was one of the Carl of Juarez games, I think, where you played and they were sympathetically portrayed as, like, Confederate soldiers or veterans, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, okay, so we want to be a member of the Way of Blue because we are cowards. We are going to get invaded more or less constantly. Yep, you're in uh, Invasion City. I really wish there was a Rat King analog in this game, because that, that would be some fun PvP we could get into. Um, again, it's like one-on-one -on -one with very low stakes for both parties, um, with you as the Covenant, like, master or servant, what have you, summoning people into, like, a, a trap-filled dungeon of your own. I think the closest thing this game has was added in the DLC. So the ring you want to get was the ring of favor, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now I, I could remember where the hidden wall is. Um, okay, let me know when you want me to tell you. Yes, sir. I I know it's somewhere near like a stairwell or a ladder. Yep. It's also where we can find the last of Aldrich's erstwhile companions. Who uh, ain't doing too hot. Just want to point out that there are like three of them. So you have the Ring of Favor normally, then you have the plus one, then you have the plus two, and then you have the plus three. Yep, uh, but we can only earn the plus or the standard one in a new game like nope. standard, right? No? Nope, you can get the plus three if you have the DLC. Oh, it was added in Ring City? Yeah. Seth says you look so comfy on the floor. I am. I have an absolutely fantastic, like, very, very soft rug. Uh, which is great, because otherwise I would be sitting on a hardwood floor, and those are the worst. Um, and the Ring of Failure? Yeah, no, it's it's going to be the Ring of, <laughs> the failure. Ring of failure. You actually got that ring, Seth. I told you to get it, remember? Yeah, no, you, you got it, and you got it pretty easily as well. Because Seth always kills stuff easily. When we think that she's going to die horribly, she's going to, nope, and then ruins, ruins the, 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 the encounter for us. Well, no, I mean, she did really well. Um, actually tends to do really well on the kinds of encounters that always give me trouble, and I think vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, because we did spend one and a half hours on the, on the Moonlight Butterfly for some reason. Hey, for a build that can't get many attacks out uh, without exhausting its stamina bar, that fight actually does become much longer. And, despite our phenomenal luck with item drops, uh, she wasn't able to get much in the way of magic-resistant armor or shielding. Fair enough, yeah, fair enough. Usually by that point, I think I have somehow one of like the, the crest shields, and that does a decent enough job. Or no, no, no. But still, still, though, she took out the Capra Demon in... In one go. Mm-hmm. 
and did one and a half hours on, and, and the one and a half hours on the moonlight uh, butterfly i was expecting it to be the other way around yeah yeah honestly so was <laughs> I. like i knew with the shvayanda you could take down the dogs in like one hit both of them dead whatever mm -hmm. but the capra demon itself for new players anyway isn't any joke no oh for god's sake you're you're cold, by the way. Yeah, it's getting it's, colder. This way. Getting colder, getting colder. You're freezing. Okay. Freezing your ass off. Well, yes, it's, off. it's winter. <laughs> I'm it's trying to give you direction of where to go, Brady. <laughs> I know, no, I know. I'm, I'm no idea. I, I can do Marco Marco Polo stuff if you want that. Marco Polo. No, I'm sorry. I'm just terrible <laughs> at remembering where these things are. I will never forget like most of the illusory walls in the first game, but this one, mm -mm, I'm I'm lost. Well, it's certainly not down there. Ooh! I'm getting warmer though. But oh, that's a uh, that's a uh, that's a silver knight. And oh, I was ooh almost. Somewhere over here. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. I know, no, it's all right. Like they, they really. Oh, you're getting hide getting really cold now. Oh no, 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 now you're getting colder, colder, so cold, ice cold. <laughs> I oh, do man. appreciate, by the way, slightly off topic, but I appreciate that the DLC or the first DLC actually added in a bunch of spells and the like that allow you to utilize um, frostbite effectively. Seems oh, Seth is, saying, uh, Seth is saying, I thought you guys were messing with me with the copper demon. No, we were not. No, okay, so now you're getting really, really close. Here it is. Here hey. it is. So, Seth says, I don't die to enemies, I die to gravity. And you also cause enemies to die to gravity, don't forget. Yeah. Okay, so welcome to hell. For you. Not for Seth. Just no, for you. No, no, no. Yeah. Just... Your own personal hell. You remember these guys, the, the Pontiff's guard dogs? Well, there's two of them here, and to get the weapon, or the, the item I'm going for, may as well be a weapon, we have to kill both of them. The second one will drop it, no matter what. Now, the good news is, a Black Blade plus 10 ought to deal a pretty heavy amount of damage to them. Bad news, one of their regular attacks will drain over half my health with an Ember with a Black Knight armor. These things are no joke. Now the good news is, they're nowhere near as hard to hit as, say, the wolves in Ariandel are. And, correct me if I'm wrong, Exit, but if you kill them, uh, they do not respawn. Like, even if you just they kill them. They do not respawn, no. And Seth says, oh wait, I killed those on the first try, right? I think so, first or no. second. No, no, no. You did it on the first. Okay. But still, didn't take long. Usually this takes, this take takes long, a no. very long time. These also, are basically I'm gonna, actually... I'm gonna tell you a tactic after you've done them all. Okay. <laughs> Something no, I figured out today when I was playing. I was playing Dark Souls today on the Dex builds. It managed to, like, technically grab me in its oh. jaws from the middle of a roll. That's unusual. Oh, this one does, it, yeah. Seth says I was staggering them a lot. Yes, no, they're they're much easier. Um, if you've got something that can unsettle in two squads per death. I have something special in mind for our two main game super bosses. I'm not squatting for these. I'm certainly not squatting for Sister Freda. But uh, <laughs> no, you you will not have any knees when you have to do that. No, for Sister Freda, honestly, due to the the structure of the fight, not the fact that the fight itself is particularly hard because it's very, very, very long by Dark Souls standards. Uh, you have to pull out every trick in your arsenal, like. Mm -hmm. You cannot play that fight fairly, I find. But uh, Seth, Seth did you give you a good tactic though, because she did tell you that she staggered him a lot, and that's that's the the the, the really interesting way of beating him. If you hit their faces, you know, just mm -hmm. stand in front of them, and you hit their faces like four times, you would be able to stagger them, go in, and then go for the frontal uh, frontal stab. Oh yeah, and given given the build I'm going with, that would more or less kill them mm -hmm. instantly. Um, we're That's how I did it as well. 
We're gonna ember up, though, because we're probably going to need it. The, the two in the dungeon, I feel like, actually deal way more damage than the one on the bridge. I, I'm um, not sure about that, though. Not sure about that either. I do know they have uh, increased attack patterns, because they uh, they can spew, uh, spew lightning, the other one can't. That's right. Um, so it might be safe to assume that they have more health or more damage coming out. Shiver says, sounds fair, let's see. Oh yeah, no. Trust me, there's going to be plenty of squatting with the the, the bosses I am planning on implementing that for. Um, one of them is just a straight-up slugfest, and the other is ostensibly the hardest boss in the base game that I've never fought before. So, that's gonna be fun. These actually look a lot like uh, one of the Chalice Dungeon bosses from Bloodborne, the Watchdog of the Old Boards. Yeah. Even even the moveset is, uh, because when you attack them from the side, they turn your they turn the head to mm -hmm. notify that they're going to attack you. They do that in Bloodborne as well. So it, pretty much this is boss is slightly copied from Bloodborne. So it's a nod to to Bloodborne as a as a thing. Can we yeah, yeah. can we assume that this is also fan service? Kinda, sorta. There was there was a boss that was removed from Bloodborne early on called something like the Beast of the the Old Gods or the Elder Ones or something, and it looked way more similar to this, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, so this this could be going a lot worse than it is. That's that's my motto. <laughs> could be worse. Almost one more hit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, okay. And you get a bonfire for your trouble, too. I think they're the only enemies in the entire series that cause a bonfire to spawn when they die. Yeah. Like, the, again, the, the devs knew what they were doing, and it also gives you easy access to the Covenant Master. Who is, um... Dead. Dead. Just, just straight up dead. This is mm -hmm. Archdeacon McDonald, and if we ask to join his covenant, we will get a special rosary of St. Aldrich's Faithful. This is, again, one of the, the aspects of the game's design I'm not super keen on. This is more or less a blatant copy of the Watch Dogs of Farron Covenant, only with the arena being the Anne Orlando Courtyard with all the giants, and your phantom getting a really cool, like, sort of darker blue color. That's, uh, that's about it. Uh, Jeff says, shh, he's sleeping. He's... I mean, to be fair, he's been down here a while. There's not a whole lot else to do. Um, so, with that done, we should be ready to uh, attempt Sister Freida. Now, uh, Exit, tell me if I'm, I've got this right. She's apparently really easy to parry. Yeah. Now, of course, there's absolutely nothing of that sort we could do to Father Ariandel, but he's not too much of a threat once you get his attack pattern down. So it's time to fight the rogue Londor cleric and her giant Scottish crow. I'm excited. And um, But instead of, I want to say, instead of trying to focus on the parry, I think you should focus more on the backstab, because she's really easy to backstab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when she uh, retreats and prepares to do that sort of dashing. Yeah, and that even continues in the third phase. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, yeah, uh, at least a couple folks who've been watching only my stream aren't aware. Yes, this fight does have a third phase once you exhaust oh, the second health bar. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I, was, I was going to tell them anyway, but this is a marathon. It's probably the longest fight in the Dark Souls trilogy anyway. Um, and you can actually summon Slave Knight Gale specifically for the second phase. He will not show up until Father Ariandel is roused. Um, and he fights with, I think that's the Executioner's Greatsword? Mm hmm I'm tempted to call him in. And in fact, you I should. think I will. Um, also, it'll be cool for our, our viewers to see him fight for now. Uh, because he is actually really good. Um, okay, so Exit, you say I should probably keep my, my current loadout with the Ring of Favor and Protection, of course. Mm -hmm. um, Ring of Favor. Oh, look at that. I mean, it, folks, it ain't much, but it's a bunch of little buffs spread out across multiple really important uh, mechanical fields of the game, so that's great. 
Uh, on, on the whole, it's probably the best ring in the game. Like, I mean, there's some that would be more useful for certain builds, but this one will benefit any character. Now... I still so think you're slow, though, right now. Uh, no, 62.5. This is the, the medium roll. Oh, okay. That's my um, bad image. Now I'm thinking, should I get something like the Grass Crest Shield instead of the Lothric Shield, if only because her scythe is going to pierce the shield anyway? You can get hit by the shield in the first place. Uh, hit by that uh, scythe in the first place. Oh, I know. I know. But I'm real bad at this. So um, having the extra stamina will be beneficial anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, trying to parry are probably not the best strategy for now. Give me a second to take a swig of this drink, because God knows I need it. And we will jump right in. So good news about Sister Freda, she has practically no defenses of any kind. The atmosphere of this fight is amazing. There we go. Okay, where are you off to? Gotcha! There we go. The first phase really isn't that bad. Like, like she does pretty solid damage, but she can't take many hits. Your damage output is really good, Brady. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's well, the one thing that a late game dex build can do for you, is like, the DPS is insane. Okay, when she raises the scythe or, like, the shaft over her shoulder like that, she's getting ready for the charging spin. And this is the attack we can punish. If ever I can find her. Ooh! That's, that's bad. Um, yeah, that basically functions as a grab that's executed from almost anywhere in the arena. Most of the time I can find her. That time we just got kind of unlucky. There we go. Yeah, you have to you have to look closely at the snow and where the snow is going, so you can see. See? Yep. And staggering her in any phase is really easy. She has practically no poise at all. She's a nun. Yeah, but she's nuns don't have poise. She's also one of the founders of Londor, so you'd expect her to be like really significantly hollowed and have some crazy armor like Sir Vilhelm, but no dice. Not like I'm complaining. I mean, this is this is fine by me. Could be worse, huh? Oh yeah, what? Oh, she can do that without going invisible in the first phase. I did not know that. Hey, Potato, welcome to the stream. Glad hey, to be here. Hello, goodbye. All right, crow time. Now, in the second phase, she is considerably more passive, really just casting out these massive zones of frost across the arena, and Father Ariandel is the threat. And you have to fight him, I think, kind of Bloodborne style. Yep, get behind him, get out when there's doing the AoE. And he does not it... have many moves, just very damaging moves. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brady, but I don't know if you, how many times you've done this fight, but um, I always like, when I switch from one target to the other, it's like the fight moves. So if I switch from the father to the to the sister, the sister will be the one trying to harass me, and the father is just standing there somewhere in the background trying to keep up. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. That's really cool. Now, it's probably going to change with Gale being active as well. Yeah, so my, my, my tip would be, would be like, uh, look who Gil is targeting, and if he's occupying one of the two, go for the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I really hope we get to focus on Ariandel, because he should be a little easier to contend with. Yeah. Again, like, just the, the visuals for this fight are breathtaking.
We somehow got Sir Wilhelm on our second try. I was not expecting that. Because he's really nasty. There's the good old Dark Souls scream. <laughs> okay. Slave Knight Gale, you're up. Slave Knight Gale, we are frostbitten. That's not a good thing. Um, Where is he? Yeah, he's he's supposed to spawn in. What the hell? So he should have probably been spawning. Did you not summon him, though? I did. I did. It said he will appear in a sure? time. Yep, yep. Yeah, he should have been in there right now. Something went wrong. Oh, that's good. Um, uh, okay. You just did to do it yourself. Meaning focus on Ariandel. Um... If Not can. right. Yeah, it's gonna be rough right now because they're pretty close. Uh, do oh well, yeah, you know this, but uh, do look at Sister Frida at some point, but she will try to heal. Yep. His ranged attacks way more dangerous than hers is, though. Yeah. Well, um, thanks a lot, Gale. <laughs> Your supervisor will be hearing from me. Oh, uh, you, can, you can extract revolver later in the game. The static bowl. The this bowl has a pretty big hitbox, though. Yes, it does. Be great if that was the boss soul weapon you could get. The bowl? Yeah. Would be would be Bloodborne fan service again because of the Logarius wheel. Oh yeah. The Executioner's wheel. Yeah, 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 which is the most useless piece of weaponry that, that's in the game. Yes, it is. Oh, no, you don't. That's the AoE. And there's the healing. Sorry, I'm a bit behind on the, uh, on the stream. No, no, so no, was... that's all right. I'm sorry I can't broadcast it directly to Discord. We were having some issues with oh. uh, the integrity of the, the stream or the uh, capture card, so... Ah, uh, yeah, you put a little stress on the capture card that way. It also seems like she actually has more defense in this phase than he does. He takes way more damage, it seems. I'm not sure. I I am definitely contacting Ring City HR after this. This is unacceptable. You do it okay, already. I mean. Yeah, They're yeah, almost, this could almost be a lot done. worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This could be a lot worse. It could have been worse! Okay, so she's doing her thing again. Oh, no, you don't. Pretty good, you hit them both. That counts as double damage. Yep. And Ooh. she will only attack us directly, I think, um, if we get, uh, like, in close range and actually threaten her. Yeah, that way you can just pull him out, of, uh, pull her away from uh, the father because he moves really slow. Yep. And now he doesn't move at all. I'm and assuming that is it for Father Ariandel. Yep. He uh, he bursts into flame and hugs his bowl to his chest, gives us a tight night slab, and we're we're free, right? Oh no, 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 we're not. I love no, voice this is where it gets really interesting. Oh. God. Fuck this phase of the fight. I, I did not know she takes no damage before the... the train. Oh my god! Well, dead in one hit. That's, uh... That's yeah, phase that, three for you. That slam contains two attacks. So she comes down, which makes you think that you need to dodge that. But you don't. You need to dodge the wave that comes after she hit that. Right, because she has a standard like diving AoE as part of her moveset in the first phase, right? Yep. Uh, uh, it's just like squatting time. It sends out like a very small circular AoE of frost, and you're fine. Seth says squatting time. Uh, not for this fight. Not for this one. The the other two, yes. <laughs> so we're gonna ember up, and we're gonna try this again. And maybe get Gale in there as well, maybe. Yep. Summon Slave Knight Gale. Look, y'all see it? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Are you sure? Phantom, yes. The Phantom Slave Nightingale will be summoned at a separate location. Yeah, that's that. Wait, does it spawn like a summon sign in the boss arena for the second phase? It, it, it just pops up in the middle of the arena. He just appears then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon okay. as you uh, hit the uh, hit second phase, he will just appear in the middle of the arena, a little bit on the uh, the left of the the main hall, the main right, road. Right. Yeah, no, because if we'd have had him on our side, that second phase would have been over with in maybe half the time. Well, let's try this again. It's going to be unlikely to have as good of a performance in the first phase as we did the first time around, because that was, in my mind, pretty damn ideal. I really love her weapon. Yeah, it's oh pretty cool, God. actually. Now she's... Yeah, like... It's a really cool moveset as well. Mm-hmm. She's a bit more aggressive this time. There we go. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Love it when she jumps straight into one of the pieces of furniture scattered about. Now, later um, on, if yeah, you're on. so inclined, we can see her sister fight, and I, I would argue that she's an even better combatant. Oh, yeah, you're, um, you're talking about Filinor. Uh, no, 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 Yuria of Londor. Uh, you can summon her in for the final boss if you complete the Londor quest line. And she's actually really, like, obscenely good. Okay. Oop. Straight into a candelabra. Well done. Nice. Don't get greedy. Oh, I won't. I won't. We just need one hit and it's over. Oh, this isn't going to end well. So I've been playing around with the Dark Souls 3 uh, dex build today. Yeah. yeah, got him up to uh, level 115 by using the Gothran, uh What is it called? The Gothran Two Swords? No, what? Some yeah, Goddard, some Goddard's Twin Swords. Yeah, what an amazing piece of weaponry that is. Well, we've got like no health, uh, but phase two. Oh, now you show up. Good. Told you. All right, Gale, earn your keep. And by earn your keep, I mean stand stock still and get frozen solid. Well, what's your what's your point about um, your thoughts about the the like two the two two handed weapons, two one handed weapons? I I like them. Uh, power stancing in Dark Souls Two was a similar concept, and I really like that. Um, yeah. The, the dancer's curved swords are really good. Like, really, really good. Haven't played around with them. Would love to see that moveset, though. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. So Gale is primarily here to tank for you. He can deal damage, and his greatsword's, you know, pretty solid weapon. But that's not really why he's here. He's here to distract. Yep, and if he makes it into the third phase, he will not make it long. I love Father Ariandel's design. I wish we got to fight him, like, directly at some point. Like, like without him being uh, bound in fetters to the chair. Well, there goes Gale. Thanks a lot, buddy. And in the third phase, since I didn't get to show off much of her moveset, she more or less becomes Lady Maria, but with, like, fire and dark damage. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I, uh, if I remember correctly, if Gale dies in a fight and you make it, so you uh, uh, the fight is concluded and Gale has died, you will not be able to summon him in later games. 
in later fights. Because you could also summon Gale for other bosses as well. Really? I did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah, you can summon him for the two princes fight in the drag heap. Oh, really? Uh, no, he's not called two princes. It's called the different girls. Uh, demon but the two... prince. The demon yeah, the demon prince. prince. The demon prince. That's the one. All but right, if you... here we go. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh, I... This is so stressful. Also, her scythe, or her smaller, like, little sickle is now just wreathed in frost. She's got a lot of the same moves, but like Lady Maria in later stages of her fight, she picks up totally insane new ones. Oh, I just think I remembered who Yuria, Yuria is. is the, she's, she can be summoned for the Medea fight, right? I think so. That's she right. fights with Dark Drift. If there's one fight I really, really don't like in this game, it's the Bidir fight. I've never done that one. Oh, you're gonna love it. <laughs> I've I've been told. Well, I'm gonna love it when, while you keep, keep destroying yourself to it. Oh my god. It's quality content. So, in this final stage of the fight, Maria, or, uh... Well, honestly, yeah, that's what she is at this point. Freda becomes completely relentless. Yeah, she has uh, unlimited stamina. She went from very slow and deliberate in the first phase to just non-stop AoEs and tracers along the ground at this point. This is, quite frankly, Lof it's kind of a lot. Lovefreak is saying you can summon him for other bosses if he dies in this fight. I, was, I, I wasn't really sure. But I've seen instances that, that somebody cannot be summoned if they died in a fight. If the fight was, uh, if, if the fight was done. So I, I wasn't really... Uh, remark it was more more like a question but thanks for, for clearing it up man mm -hmm. also a person in background uh you can call me exit <laughs> yep yep he is extremely knowledgeable about these games and has run just about every build i haven't before and also does uh guest commentary over on our friend set the overwitches channel where we are currently like working our way through dark souls one blind God, this is this is not going to be the run, but man, she's tough. And uh, uh, the backstab opportunities more or less vanish here. You know, coming to think about it, Brady, I think I figured out what I should stream. What? Dark Souls 2 Blind. Actually, yeah, no, you, you may enjoy it more, especially past the first couple of areas. It's a really enjoyable game with some rock-solid uh, mechanics. Just, uh... It's the black sheep of the family, in part, I think, because folks were expecting, as I said yesterday, that Dark Souls 1 experience, like their first time playing a game like this again, and just didn't, you know, get it, because they, they were already familiar with the way the, the game and the series worked. Uh, Lothric, uh, first off, Lothric, welcome to the stream. It's our first time seeing you. I hope you're having a good day thus far and enjoying your time with us. Uh, we're going to Ember one more time. In this go-round, I actually am going to go for the parry, because it seems like in the third phase, I cannot get backstabs in with any regularity. We can learn her. And, I mean, blocking in the second phase is a... Actually, blocking in this fight at all is a fool's errand. Now, let's see. These are pretty good rings, I think. So we did get Gale. We did get Gale. I want... Yes, we have confirmation that we got Gale. Oh, Seth is saying, Exit, I think you need to be more strict with the squatting time. Uh, I'm not a moderator here. So if you have any complaints, <laughs> I would uh, direct your... I would uh, allow you to direct your question to MC2. Yep. I mean, he would gladly do it to me as well. So I... <laughs> Damn. There we go. I mean, we took the hit, but look at that damage. Jesus Christ. That's the stuff we're looking for. Man, why isn't the second phase just more of this? I like this fight. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna... We're gonna be clipped a couple times. Oh, Lothric, thank you so much for the offer of embers. I may just take you up on that, depending on how this goes. Uh, 
Ah, uh, hello. Ooh, she just tanked right through that. That was basically her equivalent of a charge attack, I guess. Okay, so parrying Freyda, much easier than attempting to backstab her. I'm assuming, exit as well, in phase three, uh, parrying would also be about as easy, given how aggressive she is. Yeah. Like, not, every, uh, not everything can be parried, but yeah. I'm guessing, obviously, anything with the Black Flame probably can't be parried, or parried easily, anyway. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, it does look like she actually takes less damage than Father Ariandel does. It could just be me, but... And she's going for the heal. Oh no, you don't. Fortunately, her heal takes ages to charge up. Looks like Gale knows the way of White Corona as well. At least I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. He also no, I never thought stand... it would be useful, He also knows really well how to stand stock still and just get tossed around like a house salad. Like, man. Buddy, come on. Oh, he staggered her. Well done. We've almost got her. Oh god, but now he's here. Oh, there we go. Gale got him. Gale got him. Whew. Lothric says plot twist, Gale is behind Corona. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you guys missed it because, like, it was toward the end of one of our other streams. But we found, I think, the Way of White Corona in the chapel, and that was an unfortunate moment. Okay, here we go. Gail, just distract her for a minute, buddy. This says exit's wife is a bit louder than me. Okay, we can we can adjust the the audio balance. <laughs> I know that was likely meant in jest, but it is something I want to keep an eye on given uh, the fact that this is all new tech for me. Yeah, you should lower lower my volume a little bit in Discord. That's all it. Right, we'll do right after this this attempt. Oh, since my health was a little lower, she like averted targets despite damage output and went straight for me. go. Gale, hang in there, buddy. You're doing great. Like, I mean, he is holding it down for- There we go! Oh no, you don't. Oh, oh Gale's out of Estes. It's okay, he is- he has done a phenomenal job of keeping me in the game. Almost going to make me feel bad about the second DLC now. Almost. That fight with Gale is, un is phenomenal, though. Yep. It's so, be so beautiful. I love the weapon he uses, too. Like, it's I so love I want to have the cape. <laughs> I was like, oh, give yeah. me the cape weapon, please. Thank you. Uh-oh. Fall back, fall back. We need, like, one solid, normal melee attack from her, just like with Lady Maria. Oh, she's, she's getting us in a damage loop, though. This is not going well. Backstab? Come on, come on! Got her! Ugh! 
Nice. Oh man, that that is not me though. That is all Slave Knight Gale, and we got her very peculiar looking soul. Um, it's not a dark soul, if you notice. It is like a faded gray soul, much smaller than a lot of the boss souls in the series. I think smaller than any of them. Um, oh my god. Okay, give me just a minute, y'all. I'm going to uh, adjust exit. Lothric says easy win. That's the only way I do it, is cheaply. That is, there is... <laughs> y'all been around here long enough, you ought to know there's, there's no other way we do it here. Okay, so exit, how would I adjust your... Oh, user volume, there we go. Yeah, if you right click on my uh, on my uh, name, you should see. There we go, sir. We'll turn that down by maybe 10, 15 percent, and mm. there we are. Lovely. Oh man, that was I have to say nerve wracking, and I was bad at it, but God, it was a great fight. Yeah, like, man. that was really good. Mechanically, it is, Seth says everything you kill is on first try with zero deaths. I mean. If we're talking about killing them with my overwhelming charm, then yes. If you mean slaying them corporeally, that takes a little bit more time. Um, so real quick, I, as I tend to do, I want to break down the mechanics of that fight. So I was maybe a bit, a bit reductionist in saying it was just uh, the Lady Maria fight. Again, the third phase definitely was. That was more or less the same exact thing. You've got status effects or like crazy AoEs flying out all over the place with a really aggressive enemy. Um, but the first two phases exit I thought were really nice. Yeah. Um, you're introduced to like the principal threat for this like little trilogy of fights, one on one. She's nice and slow, clearly telegraphs her attacks, gives you an opportunity to get familiar with kind of the way she's she plays, because you're going to be dealing with her for a while. Um MC says that reminds me of Re Zero. Oh. There's someone who can kill anything in one shot. I think there's an entire like satirical manga and anime based around that. Um but the second phase, I think, is where the fight actually really shines. Because uh, you've got this massive hulking beast acting as support for a relatively frail human enemy with zero poise. It's actually, if you look at that second phase, it's a much better version of the same kind of fight that uh, the Champion's Grave Tender and the Great Wolf are going for. I, I dig it. I dig it a lot. Uh, Exit, any thoughts on it? No, I, I totally agree, man. The, the, the second phase is, for me, is also the, the phase that really ties it all together. The third one, um, not so much, M mostly because uh, the, there is like a little bit of dialogue that's pushing the, the narrative forward, but it, uh, for my opinion, it's not like enough to say, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Feel, I feel where it's going from, where it's coming from. I understand it, but I'm not feeling it. And the so, yeah, fight as a whole feels a bit too long, if anything. I, it's supposed to feel to to feel long. That's the whole the whole deal with the fight. There's no other. There's not hardly any other boss in this game that the fight that takes this long, with three phases. No, no, not at all. I don't think there's any uh, other boss in the entire franchise that has three distinct phases associated with three distinct life bars like that. But uh, notice we get two bonfires, a regular one, uh, in this lovely chapel. We have totally not just desecrated and a special bonfire at the back of the chapel that will allow for passage to the drag heap near the corpse of this serpentine-looking uh, creature. This allows access to the second DLC, but really, if you want to do this properly, uh, like in terms of like canonical order and things like that, we need to beat the main game, then head into the second DLC. Uh, the second DLC is almost explicitly meant to be like sort of a, a post-game conclusion to the entire trilogy. Um, MC says season 2 is ongoing but it's an anime where the main character dies and goes back in time until he doesn't die um, story of my life the past few months and the painter seems to be doing just fine and soon I will see it. Excellent. All right, so we are actually done here. We will come back to this DLC to clear out the Millwood Knight camp uh, on a later stream, I think. I want to do the super bosses today and then dive back in with, like, a wrap-up of all the stuff we didn't get in the base game before tucking into the second DLC. But, um, yeah, yeah, pretty good fight. Solid way to close out uh, a DLC that I would say 
is kind of average in quality overall. It's not phenomenal, but it's it's all right. So which the oh nameless. Oh no no no! We're we're headed to the untended graves. This is this is the fight I dread. Well, no, sorry. First, we're going to Firelink Shrine to cash in uh, our souls, probably for yet more health, because uh, that additional uh, couple hundred points of health we bought actually really helped us out. Like, really helped us out. So, Firelink Shrine. Oh, and we can get um, depending on your preference for your build. Either I want to say Freyda's Sickle or Ariandel's Unseen Flail. Um, it's your game, man. Go for it. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I meant, like, um, depending on the preference of whatever character um, a player happens to be running with, you can get either or. Um, oh. Freyda's weapon is far and away better for us, but Ariandel is good for caster builds, I want to say. What is the weapon from Ariandel? Uh, it's his Flail, I think. It's a whip. I, I could be wrong about that, but let's have a look-see. Yeah. So we have Freyda's Great Scythe, uh, a great scythe wielded by her sister Elfreda, with a curved blade thinly coated by painted world frost that easily breaks the guard of shields. That's really good. In the painting, the scythe is a symbol of a long-lost home, possibly explaining Elfreda's preference for it. And you get, like, a special stance as the weapon skill that allows you to replicate some of her moves. We'll go ahead and buy that. Why not? Uh, but the alternative is the whip, Rose of Ariandel, which actually just looks like a severed corby and talon yikes a flail yeah. used by the bulbous father of the painted world to shred his own skin producing blood to appease i.e to quell the flame both a weapon and a miracle catalyst ariandel being the restorer of the painted world knew that it was painted with blood and only blood could protect the secret we don't need that it's really cool but we don't need it it's the faith thing anyway mm -hmm. yeah like well so is freyda's actually a ton of weapons in this game have a faith requirement it does have a faith requirement, but skills better on intellect, so... Yes. That would be more like a caster, uh, for me, a caster thing. Oh, we get two levels out of this, and both of them are going into Vigor, because I'm a coward. <laughs> and... I will say there's nothing more satisfying than, like, going out of a level up screen and seeing those little bars at the top of the screen get exponentially longer. <laughs> Yeah, going for that end boss and health bar. Yeah, and man, we're gonna need it. Um, the boss we're coming up against will deal some pretty significant damage, but the secret, like, super boss we're going to work our way towards afterwards, I think, uh, could drain <laughs> this health bar effortlessly. Oh, yeah. Okay, so welcome to the Untended Graves. Uh, it's just the Cemetery of Ash without a skybox. And with a couple new enemies uh, replacing the old ones. I think there's, like, more dogs and uh, the Grave Wardens with the crazy curved daggers instead of the little hollows. Mm-hmm. Is that and it? Also, yeah, no, no, no. There's also uh, two crystal lizards, like the crystal Ooh. dragons, instead of one. Very good. We, we might visit them later. Uh, they, well, if you're, if you're hungry for Titanite Chunks, they, uh, if you kill both of them, you have four. Oh, and the Corvians. The Corvians are here for some reason. Oh, gotta love those sounds. If Shiver was here, he would say that his sister is represented in this game. <laughs> Seth says, ooh, I remember this area. Yeah, I kinda hate it. We get the Ashen Estus Ring, which, much like our regular Estus Ring, strengthens the, uh, effect of our Ashen Astus Flask, and can be found in the very same casket we woke up in at the start of the game. Except wait, which designs for the Corvians do you prefer? Uh, Dark Souls 3 or the other one used throughout the series? Uh, I think aesthetically I would go for the Dark Souls 3 ones. Yeah, yeah, they... They look... Uh, I wanna say... I wanna say the other one, but... Uh, <laughs> they, these just look better. The other ones are certainly unsettling in how human they look. Oh my god, dogs. No dogs. I, I did not just kill, like, two ridiculously powerful mages so I could get thrashed by dogs. No. Oh, Dark Souls 3 dogs are the worst. Now the Grave Wardens come in. I actually really like the enemies. 
Their little twin daggers are pretty good weapons too, if I recall. Uh, yeah, they are. Especially uh, in PvP. We Apparently. were invaded by another player, great. Invaded here? Wait a minute, what? Who invades here? Somebody had a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> oh, they're they're a great sword build. With some serious lag. Jesus. Jiminy Christmas. And we've got uh, a Grave Warden on our case. I might be able to deal with this by popping a, a seed. Yep. Have fun. Or not. Wow, this thing is really, really devoted. Well, if he if he isn't coming close, he's not gonna harass it. But and he, I think he knew yep. that you see it because he ran. This is not ending well. Oh, there you go. Uh, Grave Warden, pardon me. Blue Sentinel. There we go. Blue Sentinel Luke. Okay. I'll go for it. Oh, no. Oh, they've got the twin swords, too, or a type of twin sword. What did the guy use to? Oh, he used uh, he used uh, fish to kiss this. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a really good parrying weapon, apparently. Yeah, yeah, it is. The it opens the the parry window is a little bit higher with that one. Mm-hmm. That and uh, the highest in the entire game, including like the small shields, is the parrying dagger, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. This is not what you typically think of uh, when you think Dark Souls three PvP areas. Oh, and Blade of the Dark Moon. This guy's lag is serving him really well. <laughs> when, oh. when blades go brrr, I like them. Well, Luke, you fought well. Thank you very much. Concord wow. Uh, credit to everybody involved there. Oh, Seth says about the dogs, poor good boys. Yeah. Yeah, the, these dogs are the worst in the franchise, though. They are ruthless. I mean, Bloodborne has some pretty good dogs. This is where we can find our crystal lizards, right? Yep. We, uh, we ain't messing with y'all yet. Now, the, the boss coming up, uh, Exit, can be parried pretty easily as well, right? Uh, yeah. A little not, bit harder not, than Fredo. But... Well, oh, you, uh, oh wait, I'm just catching up on the on the stream now. You're skipping the lizards? For now, yeah. I want to make sure that we uh, we explore the, the main area for any treasures and the like, and so we can deal with the spirit that's going to invade me any second. Oh, yeah, on the ridge, you mean? Yeah, and this is, if I recall, this is not a fun fight. It's actually pretty easy. Oh, wait just, a minute. You're from the archives. Just stay close. That's all I can tell you. She's an expert at parrying, though. But not at following up. No. But I mean, it's really hard to get a clean hit on her, from my experience. But you don't need many of them, so that's the trade-off. She gets diff more difficult when uh, when there's more distance between the two. Yep. And she uses the Crystal Sage's Rapier, I want to say. Uh, yeah. No, wait. Oh, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Oh, you 
you were awfully close to the distant, the uh, edge there, sister. Oh, if only you had FP like I do. And right off the edge. There we go. Got a Seth victory. See, told you it was easy. Yeah, no, that, that wasn't nearly as bad as I remember it being. If you reload the area, you find uh, the weapon there. Her, uh, her cane, or her staff, right? Uh, I thought so, yeah. Oh, or did I already get, I, did I already get one because I killed her in the archives? Let me see. Um, is it the Sage's Crystal Staff? Uh, oh, God, hold on. I thought it was. It looks like it. No, it was a different one, I think. Seth says, wow, easy. Um... If you try to fight her, like, straight up, if I recall, it is not. Maybe she drops a sorcery or something here? So there isn't a ton of good loot in the Untended Graves, but there is some. There's certainly some. Well, I say that. Maybe there's not any. An Ashen Estus Ring, if you really, really want it. Yeah, I'm really looking for it, but I, uh, it could be the... I thought it was a, the rapier, to be honest, but... Oh, that's a boss soul weapon. Oh, then I'm probably, I'm probably thinking about it as well. Yeah, the, the Crystal Sage's soul can be used for it. And honestly, as rapiers go, it's, it's not great. Easy, easy, easy. Are you gonna get the Swordmaster in here? For this? Should I? What, what do you think? Yeah, you should. Maybe attempt it once without and then call him yeah, in? Or... Fair enough, yeah, 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 fair enough. I mean, you did uh, you did Frida as well without uh, backup the first time, so. Not not for trying to have it otherwise, but. No, no we're, not, we're never going to mention that. We're just gonna say, no, 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 the first <laughs> yeah. time we tried that. Oh, yeah. no, yeah, and that's right. You can summon in the Master. Uh, who hopefully will fare a bit better in this fight than he did against me. And, you know, like world you geography. Him off. You pushed him off the edge. We didn't while, even push him, you... he just walked off the edge. Yeah, while you were not looking. He was like, oh, my heart is broken, he left me. I'm just gonna, gonna finish myself off. <laughs> <laughs> well, as it happens, he fell all the way down here into a parallel universe. He's just been hanging out since the start of the game. Nobody can fight me here. I'm safe now. And then you call him up. <laughs> Seth says Seth victory indeed. No, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I love those, to be honest. They're my favorite little moments in our playthroughs. They, they happen a lot in Dark Souls 3. We're going back to rest now that we've kind of charted out the cleanest possible path to take to the boss. There's not like a really, really clean one, but... Yeah, you can well, run. You can run past most of all of all of this and get in oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, should I get my parrying shield or no? Uh, it's up to you, man. I mean, I just remember blocking doesn't do a whole lot here. Oh uh, no, it... he, will, he will devastate the devastate you because if if you even if you do a hundred percent block, you will lose so much stamina. Yeah, no, he he is a champion in like the kind of like how we just squared off against a really powerful Dex humanoid character. We're heading to a very powerful strength-based character now. He's not, I recall, he's not helping, though. Yeah, I know, I know, but, like... It's not a very good Halberd, either, for that matter. No, uh, Havel. I said Havel. Oh, no, Havel. Yeah, no, no. It's, uh... It's Eurix Gundir without the corruption this time. 
uh, performing under the name Champion Gundir, the Champion of Ash. And uh, he's at full strength this time. Oh, damn. Damn. Usually, he sticks to his halberd attacks almost exclusively, but this version does have a lot of melee attacks as well, like, performed with his... Oh. Oh, damn. I'm going to have to learn this fight again. Oh, also, something to take note of. You cannot stay behind him, effectively. No, he will, he will kick you in the face. Yeah, he will almost always follow it up with a retreating or a sort of uh, 180 roundhouse, and God Almighty, are those unpleasant. How, uh, how's the uh, burying going? Oh, got one. And believe it or not, based on his health, he is really susceptible to, like, critical attack damage. Yeah, that, that overhead, like, cleave is really exploitable. Except you get his health down and he gets really angry. If the, if the eyes turn red, you're in trouble. Yep. This is phase two. And little problem, in the second phase, I want to say practically none of his halberd attacks are actually easily parryable. He's actually using more physical attacks than halberd attacks, really. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this, but we're learning. Oh, there we go. I love the, the music. tried to parry like the giant jumping thrust. <laughs> hey, it works with the hollows with the big axes on the wall, so... Why shouldn't it work with the most powerful warrior human history has ever seen? What do you think, by the way, Brady? Is this, uh, is this an alternate universe, or is it a time jump? Most people want to say this is like an alternate timeline. This is what would have happened if we had never shown up, and Gundir got here too late. So bear with me here, because I'm thinking it's a time jump, and this is the reason why. So there's the um, the maiden in the Firelink Shrine. Mm -hmm. There's also a maiden here in the Firelink Shrine. Yep, same one. Yeah, same same one, exactly. If you don't talk to the, sh to the maiden in the base game, and you come here and you talk to her here, and then you go back to the original filing shrine and you talk to her there, she will actually mention very, very uh, shortly that she knows who you are because she's seen you before. That makes oh, me... Oh, man. Oh, yeah, sorry. We got him down to, like, the last little sliver of health. That was not a bad first attempt. No, definitely not. If, if we go in with the master, we've got this. So she basically goes into filing shrine and she talks to you and says, Oh? And then she said, oh, no, nothing. I was uh, uh, reminiscing. And then and then she will start with her original dialogue. Right, right. No, I've, I've read that. That's... You know, I think, I think you're right. Yes, this is, like, um, perhaps before the start yeah. of the game? Yep. And uh, Seth says the champion of ass and squats. Yes, squats. Just as soon as I get over to the boss door, there will be squats. Don't you worry. Uh, you have to give what the fans want. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will get my standard shield back out for this because I don't want to lose any health. So and did you master... drop anything here or no? Hmm? Did, did, uh, did you no. drop anything here? Or you all went back and, and restarted it? Oh, she didn't actually. Oh, weird. I thought she dropped something here. I think if you kill her here before the Grand Archives, she may. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I usually do this first, and then I go to the Grand Archives, for some stupid reason. And I want to say, the Master is not a huge help, but he will provide just enough. Yeah, you want to go and uh, call him in now? 
Uh, yeah, just as soon as I clear all of these guys out, because they, they do deal damage. Like, more than I would care for. Potato says she's really enjoying not being the one doing the squats. Well, wouldn't you? Or rather, don't you? Potato also does the squats when Seth does the squats. Really? Oh, yeah, that's I... a lovely show of solidarity. Good on you. <laughs> We're still we're still waiting for that video footage of that, of course. But yeah, we believe we believe Potato. Why would he lie? I meant for that to be a kick, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting plenty of chimes, which are great for all of those miracles I don't cast. Um, give me one minute. Here we go. We asked for five, right? Or rather, I said five would be our our default. So Ugh. get to work. Not the best. Uh, not the best perspective in the world, but here we are. There we go. I've got to get a camera I can aim more easily. <laughs> All right. The fans are pleased. Lovely, lovely. That's that's why we do it. Okay, Master, who has definitely seen better days, come on down. Let's hope he doesn't drop off the edge in this... Uh... <laughs> Just walk straight <laughs> forward off the edge. Oh, it's you. Fine. Bye. <laughs> what... I was about to say, please tell me he's not actually going to do that. He just saw an enemy. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, master? Matt, no. Master. Master. Focus. Focus. Now, he does not have a ton of health nor a ton of Estus, but he deals really good damage, I want to say. God, just the, the range on those halberd cleaves is insane. I think you should go two handed for this. Oh, I am. I am. Man, he's got great range. Like either phase, phenomenal range with the halberd. But the halberd, correct me if I'm wrong, is a pretty crappy weapon when we get our hands on it. Yeah. It's false advertising, for sure. Although that's the case with most boss weapons. Hey, Shiver's here. Hi, Shiver. Welcome to the stream, or welcome back to the stream. I think you were here a bit earlier. Hope you're still doing well now. Well, he got the master in a grapple. You did miss uh, something uh, that I mentioned, something about your sister, when you were here. The Corvians. And that your sister was well represented in this game. Oh god, master help! Master help, we're almost there, come on now! What? What is he doing? He's, like, just skirting the periphery. Master, damn it, you're supposed to stay away from the edge of the arena. Did you learn nothing? <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Second try, I mean, with help still, but wow. Wow, okay. Very good. So, and as soon as we take him down, then the master just goes wild with sword swings on his corpse. <laughs> like, see, I'm helping. King. Shiver says this guy looks familiar. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's really cool that they let you fight the first boss of the game at, like, uh, his max power. And see that, uh, he probably could have handled this if he had made it in time. Oh, I think he's mentioning the fact that he played, uh, the first one, uh, when he was at my house. He was here, he was here this morning. Cheer oh, with me. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, I've, I've let him play Dark Souls a couple of times, but he is always in trouble with this boss. So I said, well, you know what? I'm going to start my second journey on this character anyway. So he tried it again, and now try it with this character, who is level 90. And yeah, he, uh, he managed, to, uh, managed to kill him. That's great. Well done. Uh, my first time playing, I had a pretty difficult time, and I, I think I got so fed up and I was out of embers and all this. My best friend, who uh, is a bit better at these games than me, I like just... It was not long after launch, so let's see, this game came out in 2016. We would have been about 18 years old. I just, like, thrust the controller in his hands, and I was like, man, could you give this a shot for me? And it took him, like, an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really hard fight to learn. It is, yeah. Um, because unlike in Dark Souls 1 and 2 for most bosses, and even most bosses in this game, you can't really roll away from many of his attacks because he's so aggressive and has such good range. You have to roll straight through them. And we're brought to, uh, this is actually really interesting, uh, the Firelink Shrine in the middle of an Age of Dark, well, not exactly an Age of Dark, this is not the Age of Dark that Londor wants to bring about, but it's, um, Firelink Shrine kind of beyond the end of the world. I thought it was Firelink Shrine imagined in the land, uh, in the, the Age of Darkness. Uh, I think... Like so a foreshadowing... Far, yeah, a sort of foreshadowing, so if you don't lick the flame, this is what it's going to be, this is what it's going to be like. If you neither link it nor steal it, yes. And, oh my god, I forgot there was more than one right there. Yeah, so the Black Knights are back, hello. Looks like they all just got thrown here. Uh... Which actually makes sense, because we're not too far from the place they were supposed to be in the first game. Hey, hey, but look, why, why are you guys fighting me? Look, do you not recognize one of your own? I know I'm, I'm a little smaller than you, but hey, I've just not had time to catch up on the training regimen, okay? I'll bulk up, I promise. I'll put in the squats. Yeah, no, exactly. Black Knight Gauntlets, already got those, we're good. Uh, the Black Knight weapons, on the whole, we got the Glaive in the arena, are really good. They're just kind of unwieldy. Like, even for a strength character, they, they have pretty high strength and dex requirements, I want to say. And so, so it eat more spinach. Yeah, no, absolutely, we will. Look, we, we are a good Black Knight. This is, this is what Black Knights do, right? We make people who really enjoyed the first Dark Souls feel nostalgic, so they like our game more. <laughs> We love that fan service. We're all about the fan service. Dark Souls 2 actually has some really cool orders of knights uh, with phenomenal armor you can get. Like, the equivalent? They're nowhere near as difficult as black knights because they're intended to be fought as, like, common humanoid enemies. Uh, have these really ornate golden suits of armor with flowing, like, white silk capes. Black Knight Leggings? Oh, hey, Master. Uh, what do you got for... The Chaos Blade! Oh, hell yeah! I so, don't the Chaos know. Blade. It's a weapon that, at least in the first Dark Souls, my best friend swears by. A cursed sword of unknown origin bearing uncanny streaks on its blade. Attacks also damage its wielder. That's why I never use it. The sword is not unlike a thing misshapen. Granted life, but never welcome in this world. In other words, Chaos itself. And if you know Dark Souls 1, you can almost read a joke into that second paragraph. A thing misshapen, granted life, but never welcome in this world as chaos itself. Oh boy, I can't wait for that on our Dark Souls 1 streams, man. Yep. Dark Souls 1 contains, a uh, fun fact for all of you out there, the only part of any game in the entire franchise the developers have felt the need to apologize for after the fact. But but it was the best game in every regard. Don't don't listen to anybody else. It was it was perfect. <laughs> Even though the back half of the game is kind of broken in a lot of really stupid ways. <laughs> as, as intended, really. Seth says I got goosebumps for some reason. Oh, don't worry. Me and you are gonna have a whole lot of fun swearing at one particular area together.
without going into spoiler territory, there's an area where the developers kind of just ran out of time and money, and instead of like really going in depth and trying to come up with a cool gimmick or hook for an area, their design uh, philosophy suddenly became control C, control V, control C, control V. <laughs> seed, uh, do we get, yeah, we get another seed of the giant tree, so you can get them a bit more quickly with access to this guy. Nothing in either of the like outbuildings though. As soon as you get invaded, one drops. That's that, that's the rule. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Can we? Well, I mean, that, that's why you do, do, every time you invade it, you actually should go back to firing shrine to, to get to to get the seed because there can only be one dropped seed. It will not drop a second one if you get invaded the second the second time and you didn't pick up the first seed. Oh, that is so cool. That's actually very very kind uh, of the devs to uh, make sure you can always have one. So yeah, it's Firelink Shrine, but without all of those NPCs that we're definitely invested in and care about sitting around. Uh, we probably want a little light here, so give me a moment. Let me just get out my awesome, like, circus fire breather torch. None of the thrones have their lords present. What a shame. But there's an item waiting for us in the same bonfire where we planted the Coiled Sword. It is the Coiled Sword Fragment. This is something of an interesting item. If we head down here, it is basically an unlimited use uh, Homeward Bone. Uh, equivalent to, I want to say, the Dried Feather in the second game. Fragment of the Coiled Sword of a Bonfire which served its purpose long ago. Returns caster to last bonfire used for resting or to the bonfire in Firelink Shrine. It can be used repeatedly. Bonfires are linked to one another irreversibly, retaining their affinity long after their purpose is exhausted. Oh, and we got Champion Gundersoul, which I didn't even bother looking at. Once a champion came late to the festivities and was greeted by a shrine without fire and a bell that would not toil. Uh, so he started taking it out on any random travelers in the vicinity. Just lovely fella. If we go down here in the Undercroft, I think there's a couple more items in addition to the NPC we can meet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, over at Andre's Forge. Yep, there's something over there, and there's, there's something else. a Blacksmith's else. Hammer. And the Blacksmith's Hammer, if I'm correct, is a pretty solid one-handed weapon. I don't know. I traded it in for uh, one of the uh, items that you get from Solar. To the Solar set. Here we go, and... Oh, in... On what appears to be the Firekeeper's corpse, we get the eyes of a Firekeeper, don't ask how. Um, a pair of dark eyes, said to be the eyes of the first Firekeeper and the light that was lost by all Keepers to come. It reveals to the sightless Firekeepers things that they should never see. Uh, necessary for getting, along with the Firekeeper's soul, the, um, I think the conclusion to one particular NPC quest line, and, yeah, Potato says they look like blueberries, they do! Um, actually, hold up. Let's have a look-see. Oh my god, they do! What? Um, they're necessary to get, um, two of the more detailed non-Londor endings, I want to say. Mm-hmm. But if you do the Londor quest line, then that's, that's it. That's all you need for that particular, um, ending. Now, the Shrine Handmaiden is still here, and still overcharging for everything she sells. Wandereth him with nary a peep from the bell. Well, thou shouldst my purpose know. What can this old handmaid provide thee? She sounds just a bit more lucid and tranquil than the, the one in the real world. To stop the curse's grasp. Tarry not for long, it is dark for now, and not a soul stirs but remember. Fires are known to fade in quiet. Or perhaps are captive already, like the poor girl. <laughs> There's that trademark Dark Souls sinister laughter. And yeah, here we go. She sells two embers, which we're definitely taking. Oh, she sells the Faith Ring. Uh, for 1,000 souls. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Why not? And of course, of course inexplicably Knight Artorius's armor from the first game. Because, 
you know, like anything related to Champion Gundir? No, 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 no. That's that that's for the regular Shrine Handmaiden. We know what you're really here for. Um, I don't know. Exit is is Artorius's armor worth it? Mm, I wouldn't say that. No. Not if we've got Black Knight stuff anyway. Yeah. Uh, it looks really cool. I will give them that. As much as I like make fun of the series for like their, their excessive Artorius kind of fan service. Uh, his armor set's really good. Really, really good. Okay. Could be better if you get a little wolf companion holding a sword. Oh my god, yeah. yeah <laughs> Thank you. But actually, you're reminding, me, so you're reminding me of a certain encounter from the DLC, and uh, I, I wouldn't say that would actually make things better, necessarily. What, wolves with things in their mouth? Well, yeah, because if you recall, there's that one encounter in the DLC where you can actually get some assistance in that fashion, and it's basically worthless. Mm, not really understanding what you're talking about. The, um, the final boss of the DLC? Uh, yeah. You can get a... Wait, no. Seriously? Yeah. You can mm -hmm. get like a, a copay like that? I've never seen that. You can summon Sif. No fucking way you can summon Sif. No, yeah, uh... you can... Really? You can find her behind, like, an illusory wall, a series of illusory walls, and she will appear as a summon sign in the boss room. Oh, wait a second. I think I did see that. Potato says you can summon Seth. No, no, no. If I summon Seth, then the fight would be... No, no. It... <laughs> the, two, the two builds we're working with would actually complement one another really well, I think. Now, if we go by the Shrine Handmaiden here, we should be able to buy Gundir's set, as well as Freyda's, if we want, the Ordain set. Uh, I actually really do like the look of Freyda's armor, but god, Gundir's is so cool, but it's so heavy. And they also let you buy Smoth's armor set, for whatever reason, if, if, if that's your thing. I shouldn't want one. Do we get at least one uh, level here? Potato says, yeah, summon Seth, make her do squats. <laughs> Alright, I guess uh, there's not left for us to do right now, aside from tackle Archdragon Peak properly, including getting all of those little items that we missed along the way to the, uh, the Guardian Wyverns. Uh, little balcony. Shiver, Shiver says, cheer. Oh, wait, they don't work here. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, I don't have no, cheer functionality yet. I'm actually really excited uh, at the prospect of, like, some kind of stream team or something like that. If we're discussing something like that. We could set up schedules, I think, that would very easily complement one another. So, uh, one thing we didn't mention much, because in the, uh... Oh, thank you so much, Seth. I really, really appreciate you guys' support. Seriously, you guys have been absolutely fantastic human beings. Uh, what, what do you need to get to get affiliate, by the way? I... Like, con consecutive know. viewers, or whatever? Uh, uh, it's consecutive viewers and followers, I want to say. God, the big ones. Screw the big ones. Um... The Serpent Men, uh, relative to their counterparts from earlier in the series, are actually pretty nasty. They drop lots of Titanite, though, so. Three years in a month. Okay. And 50 followers. Oh my god. Can't get greedy with the big serpents. I always get greedy. Yeah, especially because they have a 360 swing. Mm-hmm. I mean, Gunder should have trained me for this. Did he? Uh, yeah, no, his, his like, standard halberd attack had almost a 360-degree radius. That, like, horizontal slash. Yeah, okay, fair enough. 
I love the design of Arch Dragon Peak. For starters, it's actually a very bright, sunny, kind of, kind of non-morbidly gorgeous area. This is lightning ring that you just missed. What? Oh my god, lightning ring, lightning ring. Yeah, on the, um, just before the gate, if you go left. Or did you already get that one? Lightning. lightning yeah, before, ring. before you enter the gate, and you, no, uh, no, I did not. Thank you. Can't believe I would have missed that. We're probably going to need that. There's a lot of really cool treasure around Arch Dragon Peak. Hey, there we go. Lightning Clutch Ring. Very useful for faith builds, I bet. Mm -hmm. Also, skills on the... Uh... Uh, like uh, lightning on your weapon stuff. So if you put uh, the gold re gold pine resin. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Like your buffs, like item buffs actually scale with all of these as well. Yeah. Listen to the bell. Don't ring the bell yet. Or we can't ring this bell yet. I don't think. Right, we have to like clear the stage, so to speak. And then we can ring the bell. I'm not sure about em it. Could be right. Ember. Ember. Uh, More a bunch ember. Of toxic dung. Yeah, look at look at all these gorgeous statues. Like That's a an imposing looking warrior. Good thing there's nothing like that here. You're missing an item again. Go back. Oh, really? There's there's so many here. So at the end. Of the stairs, turn right. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Ring ahead. Oh hey, presto. It's actually a pretty good ring too. Oh my god, yeah, it's one of my favorites from the second game. Ring of Steel protection. Mm -hmm. That uh, we might want to wear that uh, for the rest of the area. It gives you a pretty significant boost. I want to say. Ring of Steel Protection, let's see, increases physical damage absorption. Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of the Karthus Milk Ring. Milk Ring's really cool, but it gives you a small dex buff, and that nice little teleporting effect, and more or less nothing else. It looks almost like an area from another game entirely. Arch Dragon Peak isn't that long, if I remember. No. But there are plenty of items to find here. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is this is an absolute treasure trove. Uh, just about anything associated with lightning is here, oddly enough. Like, you think the, the Acolytes of the Dragons would want that all kept as far away from them as they possibly could be, but... What are they? Whoa, what? I didn't see them jump like that before. Hmm? Oh, the, the jumpy flippy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is an attack or a maneuver only the model with the, the twin daggers can perform. Yeah, that and, jo and Yoda from the, uh, the second Star Wars movie. <laughs> Man, did you ever play any of the weird, like, little licensed games, the prequel trilogy? Uh was linked to. Like, like I remember when there I was, was very young. Man, there was a four-man co-op game. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot what the name was, but you play as uh, one of the four uh, clones. Yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, Republic Commando. Yeah, that's the one. That, that was actually, really good. That was actually a really good fight. A really good game. Yeah, and there was, a, there was Bounty Hunter starring Django Fett, I think. Mm -hmm. That one was okay. Uh, and of all things, like the PlayStation 2 Xbox GameCube release of the licensed Revenge of the Sith game actually wasn't that bad. It was like a pretty standard brawler with some pretty cool boss fights. Yeah, but it, it, was, it was a pill in comparison with the Force, Un Force Unleashed. Oh, absolutely, as did the Force Unleashed 2. Oh man! No, he mentioned it. Yeah, Ugh. those are really good games. But I was yeah, also I mean... a big fan of the. Um... Oh, 
Oh, it's grabbing me by my air. Um. <laughs> oh no. That's... Oh, the the serpent men are no joke in this game. In their other appearances throughout the series, they are actually really easy to deal with. You remember those Dark Forces games? Uh, no, I don't actually. I don't know that I ever played one of those. Those were original Lucas Arts games, uh, 3D built on the I think the built engine, which was used for the Duke Nukem uh, for oh, 3D games. Gosh. And uh, and it's it's a game about a guy with a blaster who finds out he's uh, force sensitive. Yeah, yeah, I think one of my friends had that when, or one of them when I was younger. I, I saw a bit of it, and I remember thinking, yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, Potato says, best Star Wars was Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. That one was really good. Yeah, and that is actually built on those Dark Forces games. So the mm -hmm. when they when they started playing around uh, with it, the, the second Dark Forces game was built on the Quake 1 engine. And then they started, like, introducing the Force and... And then they really went ham, and they built the game that uh, Potato was talking about. That you could actually like. Do... People, are, I think people are still playing that game. There is like, they are. yeah, they, you could do one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, sword fight battles. Mm-hmm. I remember. So good. Like the best we got as far as in-game force use until Force Unleashed, maybe. Yeah, well, Force Force Unleashed. One and two are more like uh, games on a rail, so it's uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, a very linear storyline. There's not not much that you can do on modification of the of the story of the way that you play. It will all fall uh, in the, into the same in the in the yeah in the same category, so to speak. But it's just still as a story and as a well as entertainment goes, it's still really solid. Rock yes, yes they are. Uh, the second game, I and a lot of folks felt probably wasn't quite as good as the first one due to the smaller budget, I think, but it was still really respectable. And I know earlier you were mentioning, like, apparently I'm going to be really, really surprised one way or the other by the, um... Oh, Potato says I think Jedi Academy recently released on the Switch as well. That's it. That's cool. That's really cool. See? Um, go ahead. No, 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 I was saying, see, the people are still playing that game. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I might have to stream that at some point if it has been ported. Um, but earlier you were saying the, the Iron Man flight in Avengers is something to witness. Did you ever play, like, the licensed game released for, like, last generation consoles for the first film? No, just because of that reason alone. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't even have well, to see it. Here's the thing. It was not great, like, as a game, as a whole. But the flight mechanics were perfectly respectable. Like, they were solid, easily accessible, not, like, disorienting or anything. They were they were fine. Just fine. Yeah, it's not Superman 64. Yeah, no, no. Uh, and apparently, based on what you've told us, uh, the, the one we're about to tuck into in a couple days is... Um... Oh, God. It's not that the controls are wonky, it's more that the camera is wonky. So, oh. um, you, you want to go in a way, you point, your, you point your controller or mouse or keyboard to that position that you want to go to, and then the camera says, no, the, the shiny thing that you want to look at is over there. And it will turn your camera and you will fly somewhere else. Oh, here's Havel again. Havel? Yep. No, that's not Havel. Wait, why is it Havel? Wait a second, why is that Havel? One of the Serpent Mages summons him. I've never had Havel here. Really? No, never. It's always like that little knight dude that I kill in three or four hits. He shows up as a boss, or part of a much larger boss battle in Dark Souls 2. Who, Havel? Yeah, you have to fight him along with Alva, you know, the guy who in this game invades you near, um... Yeah. The dungeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh... Someone wearing Luca Teal's armor set, but using a very powerful bow, all three of them at once. It's a really good fight. So you remember this guy from the first game, right, friends? Except now he's got about three times the health. And this is not the only encounter you get into. Nope. 
Uh, the Serpent Man Sage we killed, uh, we'll call these guys in a lot. Several different, like, kind of legacy NPCs from the series. I think it's a cool way to send them off. I, I don't mind this fan service. I really don't. I just, I'm just curious now because I've never had Havel spawning here. I don't think I've ever seen anybody but Havel, actually. No, I'm oh, thinking, well, we... is that maybe like geared on build? I, I don't, I'm sure there's just like a likelihood and I get, as MC can tell you, like with dice rolls, phenomenally unlucky. <laughs> But I think this is cool. We're basically in Dark Souls Valhalla, so all of these heroes of the past are coming back for one last fight. Yeah. I'm, there we go. I'm pretty glad that uh, Miyasagi said, well, after this, we're not going to make a Dark Souls 4. Everybody was happy. Yeah, Otherwise, it would just be the same exact thing again. Yeah. The game base wouldn't let them get away with anything else. I think this is the game that they needed to make, but didn't want to. Yeah, no, because, like, the fan service is so gratuitous, it honestly makes it feel like it would be the best game in the series were it not for the fan service. Hmm. Like, mechanically, this is far and away the best entry of the whole lot. Oh, my God. And now Havel's casting a stone skin pyromancy on himself, because, you know, why not? I better get, like, either a piece of his armor or, like, a medal for this. One or the other. You can actually get his armor in this game. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can in all three main games. In the second game, you find it at the bottom of a sewer. Uh, in this game, you find it at the, uh, the place where you fought the rock demon. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This is just how you have to fight him as a dex build, very cautiously and with lots of heals. Come on, come on, man. There you go. Do you remember what that caster was called? Sage caster? Or the... uh, no, no, no. It's just, um... It's like just a serpent man sage or something like that. I don't know that I've ever seen, like, an official name for it, because I don't think it ever drops any of its gear. There's what we can punish. That got him, finally. Woo. Nice work. And we get the Dragon Tooth and his Great Shield. Which I mean we're going to look just great in our inventory. No way in hell we can use that. Hello, Serpent Man. Ah, uh, here Pebbles. we go. Man Serpent Summoner. Will yeah, summon yeah. either the Drake Blood Knight, Havel Knight, or the Ricard Knight. Yeah, yeah, the Drake Blood Knights from uh, Dark Souls 2, some of my favorite enemies. Those are the ones that are always come in my game. Always. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Now, in Dark Souls 2, they were actually insanely powerful and had astonishing poise. They, uh, they do not here. Don't know that I've ever seen Ricard, though. Everyone does. I mean, if you, uh, you remember that there is another summoner? A little bit? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, bit yeah. Up. That always does the Ricard for me. Naked, naked boy. Probably the easiest of the three to dispatch. Yeah. Oh. I mean, God, he wasn't that tough in his original appearance. Okay. What do we have? Just some man serpents to clear out down in the gallery. Nothing too bad yet. But I remember there's like these armadillo looking critters a bit further in. And I remember those being very nasty. Oh, hello. So the, the serpent men actually focus almost exclusively on attacking you in pretty significant groups. That is not at all how they worked earlier in the series. 
Oh, this is interesting, by the way. Um, so the Man Serpent Summoner can either summon the Dreadbot Knight and Hell Knight, so it's not bound to anything, which I was right. thinking of. What is interesting though, it will stop spawning Havel types after the actual Havel is killed. So if you kill the Havel Knight, the real one, and you go back to one of those summoners, he will never spawn Havel uh, again, because the original is dead. Oh, so where uh, I killed the Asylum Demon for like the 500th time. No, 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 that's not where Havel is. Havel is actually pretty close to where you are now. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So Remember? all we gotta do is take him down. Yeah, uh, that... I don't, actually, but once we take him down, that's it. Like, yeah, then the, the area you... becomes much easier. Yeah, because you cannot, the, the summoner cannot summon Havel anymore. Oh, okay, so in this case, it's not like summoning one of an order of knights, it's actually summoning this one guy somewhere in the zone. Yeah. That's interesting. That's yeah. Really interesting, actually. Almost like, uh, what's his name? Braidor in uh, Bloodborne. Help me, help me out here. The uh, deranged assassin who invades you multiple times throughout the DLC. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, uh, what on earth is the name of his weapon? Like, oh, Thunderstone Plate Ring. That's pretty good. Uh, the Mutilator or something? Desecrator? Something like that. Some, yeah. Something very, like, similar in its connotation. Also, good to see that the man serpents, uh, or the serpent men are doing a much better job of keeping the place renovated than most folks back in Lothric do. <laughs> Again, like, I've been making this case throughout the entire trilogy of playthroughs, I think things were much better for most people under the dragons. I mean, it, it couldn't get any worse than what Lord Gwen has done. It could cost you a little bit more sheep, but that's it. Yeah, exactly. Also, they will just happily give you tail weapons, like, all day long. <laughs> Don't care. Oh, God, yeah, it's these things. I remember you. It's the roly-poly duo. Trio, sorry. Yeah, meet the knockoff Gorons. Wow, that's a deep cut. <laughs> the knockoff Gorons. Well, no, they're like hybrid Goron Dodongo. Well, no, Dodongos, actually. Like, they even look similar to Zelda 64 Dodongos. Seth says dragons are the ultimate good boys. They sure are in this setting, anyway. Jesus Christ, this is why I hate them. They never stop attacking. Never. But I have no choice but to stop attacking. If you could only flip them over a little bit. Is that actually something we can do? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. If you do so a power like... attack, you have a chance that it will flip over and, and then you can hit it for massive damage. That is so cool. Seth says tiny Dodongos. Yes, yes they are, and they're the worst. Oh no. Do you, uh, I think that's a, a little bit of a callback to one of the Sony uh, E3 stages. Well, that's new. Really? Is it? I, or I don't remember that anyway. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah you okay. kill, if you kill it, though, you get serious amounts of, uh, of goodies. Oh, I know. Just uh, looking at my, my Estus. We ain't doing that quite yet. No. <laughs> You're, you have to put Okay, so uh, that was an interesting little exploratory mission. That's what I'm going to call it. It totally wasn't an attempt to progress that yeah, failed. Yeah, um, you, can, you, can, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You're so close to the bonfire. Oh, it was over there? Yeah. If you, if oh, you, past the dragon. Past the dragon, uh, up the hallway, ignore the, the summoner and the, the person that she summons and just beeline it for the, for the, uh, the bonfire. You're there. All right, time to tap into my latent powers of cowardice. <laughs> yeah, stop running away, you coward. By the power of fear. Ah. Okay, so look look at that rock formation. There's a little ridge on your left. You can go up there. You cannot be hit by fire. Lovely. Oh, God. Dodongo's why? No, you missed it. No, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. Just keep going. Keep going. 
Nothing there. Uh, summoner in here, right? Yeah, summoner in there. Just ignore. Run, run, run. Who you got for us today? Oh, it looked like a Drake Blood Knight. Up here? Yep. Nope. No, there's the. Down there. No, no. Yeah. Uh, straight. Go straight. Go straight. Go straight. And we are technically done with our Dragon Peak for all intents and purposes, aren't we? Not yet. There's some some interesting stuff that you can continue to do, and I should I really urge you to do it before you go for the yep. boss. Because I'm pretty sure if we activate pull this switch, uh, Shiver says she was supposed to be in Italy. <laughs> oh man. Oh, is this? Oh, a sm smoff with uh the Gundir helmet and a dragon tooth and oh my God, Yorm shield. That is a tanky build. Goodness gracious. Yeah, this is what'll allow us to access the super boss. I ain't about to do that yet. That's something you need to do first. Yep, so first things first. You're not gonna summon anybody. Looks like they might carry a unique whip. They uh, carry the mercantile uh, staff. Mercan hmm. uh, I can't pronounce that name. But, uh... The staff is actually one of the one of the couple of items that you can use to gain more souls. Oh, fascinating! So it's either the it's the staff, it's the uh, shield of want, and the uh, the the, the covetous ring. Oh wait, and the, of course the uh, the helmet, the uh, infamous mimic oh, helmet. Oh yeah, the uh, the the token of avarice, I think. Symbol of avarice. Yeah. Or what I should call it, put a mimic on your face. Come on. Come on, little Dodongos. I can see why that horrible CDI meme couldn't wait to bomb you. <laughs> CDI meme? Jesus. There's some deep cuts there, Brady. Hey, hey, I wasted an entire childhood, like, studying, like, gaming history and the like, so... And I, you had I to go through the CDI them. stuff as well, man. You know, if it weren't for the cutscenes, those games would just be, like, mediocre, like, early 90s failed uh, attempts at, like, a quote-unquote deeper or more realistic game, but, oh god, with the cutscenes. The, uh, the cutscenes were so bad. So now you can hit it for oh, too late. <laughs> no, I, we we gotta get we gotta get rid of the Dodongos first. No no no, you flip one of the Dodongos over. Oh yeah no no, I saw that. Well the dragon did actually. It it helped us out. Okay so buddy, we're, you're gonna have to come down. Like we we are not doing this. We are not doing this in that fashion. I. Okay. I did cheese it and just shot my crossbow at him constantly. Well, I mean, lots of players don't ever use their... Oh, that's gonna suck. Yeah. Use their uh, arrows or bolts for much else in these games, so it's a perfectly <laughs> legitimate strategy. Here it comes. Oh my god, you're big. You are not a Dark Souls 1 nor a Dark Souls 2 dragon. Jesus Christ. I think I did that for the Dark Souls 1 dragon as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have before uh, myself. It may actually be the hardest dragon in the entire series to fight uh, in melee. Just shot, drag uh, shot arrows at it until it was dead. Yep. Oh, stop it with the tail. I, I get it. You've got a tail. And it won't quit. That's That's fine. Great. Good for you. Oh, it's got a ton of health. It's making me miss my thrusting sword. So it is catching me with like all of these tail whips regardless of where I am via the its body. There we go. Yeah, just breathe fire. There you go. That's what we want to say. Oh my god, I, I could have sworn I rolled through at that time. But the dragon does not care, its hitbox is massive. 
Wow. This is not... It's not going horribly, it's not going well, but it's certainly not going horribly. Oh, I wish I could cut your tail off! God almighty, you've got help! You're leaving, you're leaving that way. Yeah, I know. Like, anything other than a katana would probably be great for this, to be honest. The world's most boring boss fight. Hold on. Man, we better get something good for this. My lord. You get uh, a lot of upgrade material. Like, uh, Titan. Good, good, good. Kind of Titanite. And lots of it. As well we should. Is this just, uh, the, the Guardian Wyvern again? Like, the same exact enemy? Yeah. Or I'm a little smaller, I think. Not by much. No. I think you can actually lunge, uh, lo um, no. like launch yourself on top of its head as well. You see that? Do you see where he's standing right now? Yeah, you can, yeah, you yeah. can get on top of that. You can actually like get on his face, do a, uh, the leaping attack again. Oh well, let's let's try that. Yes, please. You know how to get there? Like, work our way around through the tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I don't, we shall learn. Nothing here, right? No. We may or may not do that now, but if I can work my way around, then yeah, I will happily take it out. Oh, oh here we go. you have to get past Havel to get there. Okay. Well, uh, tell you what, before we do that, why don't we uh, rest at the bonfire, because fighting that thing in melee is not happening today. No, no, no. What's over here? If you drop oh, like, down, you drop down there. Know. Oh, that's uh, no, that's actually Havel's uh, thingy. Okay, so we are we are resting at the bonfire. <laughs> now oh. I do know I've I've never tried it myself, but Havel in all of his appearances is supposed to be pretty easy to parry. Yeah, you can even get, get some backstabs in there as well. Oh yeah, no, no, no. In uh, in his first appearance in the series, you can get him into an endless backstab chain really easily. Give me that staff. Not today. Okay, let's take care of good old Havel then. And get some loot while we're at it. Oh, oh god, the Dongo. Why the Dongo? They are aggressive little suckers. Okay, and you aren't a mimic, no. Oh, Twinkling Titanite. Useful for some weapons, but I think as, as mundane as it may be, the Black Blade's gonna do it for us. And up here, on top of the ramparts, yeah, there's Havel. Yeah, and then on the left, you can drop off and then you get to that uh, place where, I told, uh, where you can get to the dragon's head. Nice. And even here, he is single-mindedly fixated on murdering dragons. Dude, I thought, like, in your lore from the other entries in the series, you realized what a bad idea that was. I thought he, he was only, um, he was banished? Yep. By Queen? Mm -hmm. he, was, he was going to kill him. Uh, yes, he was. Um, as were a whole lot of people here at Arch Dragon Peak, as it happens. Let's 
so when he's got the stone skin, he's not invulnerable, but very, very near. Oh yeah, I don't I, know why I tried. And you can voice through everything now. But he's slow as all get out. If we had like powerful ranged magic miracles, especially, we'd be able to cut him down in short order. Yeah, my caster build makes a makes it a, a joke of a fight. Mm-hmm. He's a bit faster here than he was in the, the other games, but that's the only really significant change aside from his pyromancy, I think. I think he, I think they kept him up to par with the rest. I mean, this whole yeah. the, the, every every fight in this game is quicker than, or faster than the predecessors. But get let's say that the the, the combat here is in bloodborne range. Let's uh, put it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Down to the last little sliver, sliver of health. I don't like that at all. No, thank you, sir. Now it is possible to bleed him as well. It's just very difficult. He is no dancer. Definitely. The leaping attack is the easiest one to punish, like with most humanoid enemies. Have you ever used the Dragon Tooth for a build? I actually, build, I actually tried to make a, a Hammer build. How did that go? Uh, okay-ish. I mean, it's there. Is, there's no way in hell that you can get your character up to minus seventy percent on load. Yeah. <laughs> Being equipped. I, I really, really tried. But I mean, you don't really need to, right? No, no, no that's, that's not the way you play him. It's just a slow and bulky, and the rolls are bulky. But you, you, you take, you can't take that much damage. You, you can take, you can handle a lot of damage. You can deal a lot of damage, but everything itself feels so slow. Yep, yep, yep. So it's it's maybe not the most exciting way to play, but a very easy one. We can mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Oh, hello, Dodongo. Let's strike builds go, yeah. I mean, there's more There's more interesting strong builds, if you were, uh, strong weapons, if you ask me. Oh, yeah, definitely. We got the Great Magic Barrier Miracle. So this is the spot that I was thinking of. I think, well, yep. if you can get here, and the dragon sparked under there, you might be able to get to pull it off. All we got to do is get it to land. I mean, easier said than done, but... Oh, oh, the Dongos. Uh, actually, no, we'll we'll keep that in mind and come back later. We did get t a Titanite slab. That's that's the most important thing we could get right now. Well, there is a, a story thing that you can uh, can get as well in this bit. I, I did, oh, I, yeah. You remember? You remember Hawk? 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 Yeah, Hawk. Hawk Hawk's would, yeah. Yeah, Hawk would. That's the one. I'm bad with names, so this is going to happen a little bit more. Um, no, it's so, fine. Uh, he has a different name in every game. So he can be summoned here. Yeah, that's right. But he's not like your usual summon. He will do something different. Yes! Remember? Yes! Mm-hmm. Okay. I will, not, I will now say no more. <laughs> I... I'll clear these guys out for. Oh my god, he actually, like, uh, reposted me. That is... That's pretty good, actually. I like that. I was trying to kick his dagger out of the way. Like so. There we go. Yeah, Hawkwood the Deserter. Hawkwood the Deserter, yeah. We want to clean this area out before we summon him in, for reasons. This is actually really cool, what we're about to do. Hey Brady, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be sticking around for like 10, 15 more minutes, and then I uh, then I have to go. Yes, sir. That's a okay. We will have maybe a little bit over 30 minutes of stream left in total, so you might get to see our very first attempt at the boss. That's going to definitely take me more than one attempt. I mean, I think we've got a pretty solid build, but it's just from what I've been told, very hard. Uh, yeah. 
But I do feel you can pull it off. I mean, I, I, even yesterday, I gave you some extra tips for the, for the Nameless King. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the first phase, uh, from what I remember, like, being told by, like, my best friend who has done this before, is not that bad at all, right? No, no, no. The, the, your biggest fight is going to be with the camera. Yeah. And, um, but like, like I told you yesterday, is that it was, I, I thought it was funny because the dragon, uh, is, is, uh, is very, um, uh, easy to fight, uh, cannot, cannot handle oh. lightning damage. But oh my god, oh my god. Can. Didn't mean to do that, but here we go. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Oh yeah, one of them's got a Kusarigama. Of course they do. Welcome to the end of the friggin' world. They're still after us. Oh, welcome to off the end of the world. They just threw me off the top of Arch Dragon Peak. That's a... If I'm gonna die, that's the way to go. <laughs> so, correct me if I'm wrong. Once you ring the big bell, if you head out to that promontory, then you can fight the boss. Yeah. Okay, so let's try that before we... Well, that's my point. If you hit the bell, you won't be able to summon Hawk anymore. Right, right, right. Okay, so I'll clear out a couple serpents, then summon him in, then uh, ring fight. the bell. Yeah, fight with him till you get to the end. Uh, at that altar, you need to do the uh, Path of the Dragon to get the Dragonstone. He that's will, right, that's and he right. And he will do that too. And then, if you do it correctly, you will be able to fight him yep. at the uh, Abyss Watches uh, boss arena. All right, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Yeah, and he's uh, he's pretty solid, if I remember. Yeah, that fight is actually rather hard, actually. I mean, he's basically uh, a great sword wielder. Like, like maybe someone using the standard Abyss Watcher moveset scaled up for endgame, which is nasty. Because uh, the Abyss Watchers, I think we can safely say, are probably the second hardest Lord Soul fight. Yeah. Like, like, for me, the Twin Princes are easily the hardest. Yeah, Twin Princes is, uh, is pretty rough. They're also my, as I said on stream, like, my favorite, far and away. Oh, we're invaded by a dark spirit. Lovely. Oh, invaded by the spirit of Artorias, apparently. What? Oh, see him. Oh, man. No, look. That's the Nameless King sword, isn't it? Uh... I can't tell these great sword apart, seriously. <sighs> oh, no, no, no. It's just a regular great sword, uh, or a more mundane one that's been buffed with lightning. Okay. Uh, Hawkwood, you, you just have fun with those serpents, man. Wait a second. Okay. Oh, no, you don't. I don't like that they gave, like, summoned uh, players uh, a fair number of Vestas charges in this game. They could have, like, uh, four, four, half of what you have. Like yeah, uh, like no. summons, remember? Mm hmm Just means PvP takes quite a bit longer, no matter which side you're fighting on. Yeah, I don't know how, how hard the fight is going to be with those uh, demons, so we might lose Hawkwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's doing okay, actually. For now, yeah. Oh, well, I say that as he just gets absolutely devastated. Oh yeah, there he goes. Oh, we got a Blade of the Dark Moon, though. Thank you, question mark. Oh, please. Is Hawkwood dead? Yeah, Hawkwood's dead. Yeah, that's okay. Just making it out of here alive is my priority now. Dark Moon Blade, help. Where the fuck is that guy, anyway? I don't know. Like, nearer the bonfire, maybe? Oh, they are a miracle greatsword build. Hello? Oh, don't tell me they're AFK. Dude. There we go, there we go. 
It's on. Got a great weapon, too. The Dragon Slayer uh, Armor's Great Axe. That's the... Um, that might be the, the special one, but the lightning buff. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, and another blue sentinel. Yeah, this... This spirit's had it. Oh, they're trying to back us up to the... Well, you could, but I would just do this. Oh, you still have the one. Yep. <laughs> very good, sir. Very good. Oh, I never fight fair in these games. <laughs> That's great. In a few seconds, you're going to see something beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> right on time. Oh. Oh, it feels good to be on this side of the invasion. <laughs> like, little force at this point. Oh, trying to backstab me, and it almost worked. That almost in no part due to skill of my own. Why does it... I have no idea. This guy is is crafty. I'll I'll give them that. So this oh yeah because the seed only works for a specific area. Yeah yeah. Oh so yeah, he's yeah. a different area now, so the seed doesn't work. He's really nimble, actually. Good God, he's gonna run us through every single enemy in the the area, isn't he? Uh, he might, yeah. This is just sad. Um, we're we're waiting over here. Just yeah. go, just go back, do your thing. Can you resummon? Oh. I don't know, actually. Really, man, this is. I mean, to be fair, I give this spirit all the credit in the world because this is exactly how I would fight. But you ought to know we're at a stalemate now. Oh, I should have saved the seed of the Tree of Giants for when he got into the area with the dragon, shouldn't I? You should have gotten more. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't carry more than one, so... Unless I think you start the game with one as your gift, in which case you can get one. Uh, in addition to that. I know, because I had two. Man, this is... Just leave him there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll we'll go back to the bell. Screw this. But I am not about to leave it a dongo alive if I have a choice. Yeah, there we go. Oh. I I do want to see how our buddies are gonna do though. You guys got this? Great. Bye. Uh, should we really? Oh, well, one of them's dead. Should I, should I peel out or should I help? What? Peel out. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Oath. Oh, Christ, Oath is dead. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I know they're not. They are hanging on by the seat of their pants. Also, by the time you get back, you're probably going to be some of them again. <laughs> I've got to pull the, the switch. Got to go for it. Oh, too bad. Yeah. Yeah, like... That do do hog. Yeah, yeah, do do hog, the hog moon uh, thing. Too bad. So my first time fighting, uh... Maybe the most famous boss in Dark Souls 1 on my most recent playthrough, the playthrough I streamed after years of absence. I'd been hyping up how awful this is going to be the entire time, right? Mm -hmm. And I end up getting invaded with half my Estus and chased into the boss room. And somehow or another, I have no idea, with a friggin' rapier, I managed by the skin of my teeth to get it in the first try, somehow. Wow. Okay. Like the the, the this, Anne this Orlando. Is more, uh, this is some high boasting coming on. Uh, no, no, no. This oh, is not no, boasting. This, oh, this is boasting. <laughs> if you watch my playthrough, I have no idea what I'm doing at any point. Like, I get lucky, and one of the bosses just keeps dashing right past me, and the other one gets caught on the scenery like four or five times. 
So you were lucky, basically. Of course, always. <laughs> I, I never succeed for any other reason. <laughs> so what we do by ringing the bell is call in this beautiful storm to envelop the entire peak, and it will not dissipate until we kill the super boss. Now, to access the boss, do we have to go up to the altar, or...? I yeah, just dumb down. Oh, God. Okay. Well... No, 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 not... Oh, sorry, I meant, uh, I meant just dumb down from the bell, not jump down from the altar. Oh, I know, but... Oh, God, the Dark Spirit is still here. Oh, yeah, just go in with six S's. You, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's happening. Um, We've got the embers. We can... Man, I had a... You know, in Demon Souls, you have, like... Uh, consumable healing items? Yeah, you still have. Divine Blessings. Oh. In a blessing. Yeah, 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 but like your standard healing items are consumable. There is no Estus analog. Um, I invaded this one guy who uh, had a build seemingly based entirely around uh, wearing down opponents' armor and weapons, which is a valid strategy in that game. Uh, but we fought for something like... I kept track of the clock, like 25 minutes, because he had this massive reservoir of healing items, like over 30 heals. <laughs> was not worth Wait, it. Was not worth going. it. Uh, I'm, can I open a shortcut here? Or? No, 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 no. He's trying to kite me to the serpents, and I'm not doing that. But he's, that, so. the seed is still active there. Should it be still active? He really shouldn't, I don't think. Either he unlocked the oh, way for Oh, for God's sake. He got me. There you go. And he taunts me afterward. Oh, no, he... With the Path of the Dragon, that's a... I was about to say, you don't get to brag after that. <laughs> At least your souls are pretty close. Yes, yes, absolutely. Which we are going to go spend before anything horrible happens to us, because something horrible is going to happen to us. And I want to get this in at least one attempt before you leave. Uh, yeah, because so I was going crazy. to leave. <laughs> uh, uh, give me a second, I'll be right back. I have to grab something, and then I'll uh, watch you at least do one try. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to keep you any later than possible, man. I, I, really, uh, I really appreciate you helping us out today. No worries, man, no worries. That's this. That's what the stream team is for. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right, folks. We have got this. We might get one more level out of this, and then it's time to throw ourselves into the jaws of the beast. Now remember. In our Dark Souls 1 stream, we mentioned how Lord Gwen's oldest child, the god of war and patron of the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant, was exiled and, like, stripped of his godhood for a horrible crime against the state. Can anybody guess what that crime was? What would be so horrible that Lord Gwen would uh, forsake one of his own children? As it happens, we'll learn he does that all the time, but what, oh, what do you think he did? Okay, let's see if we can't get one more level out of this. And if we can't, it's it's pain time. Oh yeah, we can get one more. Um, let's round out that health, because we need it. Farewell, Ashen One. And straight back into the shit. The Great Belfry. And I do like that this uh, bonfire is right next to the boss. Hope everybody's doing well, by the way. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. I know it took a little getting used to this new style of... Uh, or the, this new technology and the like, so I appreciate you guys for hanging in there with us. Uh, always appreciate Exit Dust for uh, being so charitable with his, his time and his thoughts and joining us for the day. And of course, ultimately, very grateful to all of you for, for tuning in and giving us your, your patronage. 
Also, thank you. I, I missed this by ages. I'm sorry. It must have been the middle of the fight. But thank you, Lothric1146, for the follow. Really appreciate that. Okay, here we go. Never, never done this before, but notice the fog door is this giant arch, so the, the gate is more or less suspended in midair. That's because this fight has some of the best atmosphere in the entire series. Let's do it. If we drop on down, we can walk on the clouds in the midst of the storm. How's our lightning defense? Not great, not terrible. Yeah, we can we can make this work. Let's just get maybe our nice little stamina shield out. Because methinks we're going to want to two-hand this the entire time. As soon as we pass through the Belfry or the Bell Tower, it begins. The hardest fight in the base game. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Welcome back. Okay, we got this. Um, I think switching out our regular shield for the grass crest and keeping it on the back two handing the weapon will be best here yeah uh, yeah also do not lose any luck on so uh the crime committed by lord gwen's eldest son of course is siding with the dragons against his father this is our boss well our boss is the king of the storm this really cool avian dragon and the Nameless King, Gwen's Firstborn. I love the design of the King of the Storm. God, look at that thing. It's majestic. And deadly. Yep. Very slow, though. God, but it's got a lot of health. Oh, do not hit him at the... It, it, the talent. Yeah, it's j just hit him in the head. He doesn't take any damage from any other source that it's had. Oh, that's good. Oh! Oh, nice! I didn't know you could do that. What? Dodge the uh, lightning strike with the statue. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, so you really want to be aiming for the, the head and the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the Nameless King will attack you himself, oh, yeah. apparently. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Hello on, just... Bring that neck down here. Oh my god. That fire damage. Oh yeah. I love the, the music though. Oh yeah. It's good one of the best musics. Yeah, this is not going to go well. I... There we go. So we're going to have to peck away at this thing, slowly but surely, but we can get there. Well, if you get a few hits in, it will stagger. And then you can do some real damage. Yeah, and remember, the Nameless King is our actual opponent here. This is the warm-up. Yeah, basically. Oh my god. It looks like a parrot from hell. <laughs> the parrot from hell, I like it. And it killed us with its its fire breath right out the gate. Oh yeah, the, fi the fire breath will fucking really, yeah. Well, we're going to try this one or two more times on stream, but that's uh, that's pretty much what you're in for today, I, I reckon. <laughs> I'll, rush, I'll watch the rest on the VOD. Alright, man, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you Always for having pleasure. me. Man. Of course, and uh, we'll be back over on Seth's channel for more Dark Souls 1 tomorrow, right? Yep, Monday. And after that, I may host a later stream, probably of increasingly frustrated Nameless King attempts. Sounds like a blast. And I'll uh, see when I'll uh, start up with the uh, Dark Souls 2. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll let you know when, it, when it's ready. And uh, of course, you, you are very much invited to join me on that, uh, that uh, outrageous trip. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you some Dutch curse words, for sure. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, we we ought to make Seth play it as well, because uh, it's a very different kind of game. And I actually think, based on her complaints about the, the first and third, she'd really like that one. All right. All right. All right. We'll it's see. a little bit slower and more strategic. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. 
if we make it through Dark Souls 1 without any of us having a nervous breakdown. Yeah, basically, that's what about my point is, exactly. Alright, take care, All right, dude. Take care. Mm -hmm, you too. Alright then. Nameless King or King of the Storm round 2. The, the hardest thing is going to be learning the exact telegraphs for its, um, flame attack. There we go. Now we can go crazy on its neck. The Nameless King looks so cool, doesn't it? Like, yeah, that that's Gwen's son, all right. Oh, God. It's usually when it goes airborne. Not always, but usually. Especially if we're right underneath it. I see. It wants to keep you in range of its regular fire attack and the Nameless Kings. Uh... Spear attacks. Okay, so his attacks most of the time are more clearly telegraphed than the King of the Storms. Okay, so when we're actually focusing on the area we're supposed to be targeting, the King of the Storm doesn't have too too much health, does it? No, no, no. It's the big, the big guy we've got to worry about. The oldest god left alive at this point. Who has just been hanging out in a monastery with his dragon pals, which is pretty cool, I dare say. Oh, and the wings take damage as well, nice. Okay. He knows lightning spear, of course, that's one of his dad's specialty. Oh my god. It can dive bomb, I've got to remember that. Almost. There it goes! Alright, Nameless King time, kids. Oh, this is gonna suck. How's everybody doing today, by the way? Everybody enjoying the stream so far? Anything I could change, do better for the future, especially since I'm working with all of this Mishigash for the first time? Well, we've killed his best friend, and the king is furious. God, I love that armor. And that crazy mane of hair? Actually a part of the armor set. Oh, he's kind of like a certain boss from Sekiro. Oh, he deals obscene amounts of damage, though. And almost all of his attacks are parts of much bigger combos. And I'm sure he has multiple phases as well. Oof. We can use this attempt just to learn him, kind of. He does seem to have a fairly exploitable jump attack, that's good to know. Oof. He's got delays on some of those attacks, though. Nasty. Mmm. Oh, man. So he's got a lot of health, and it's just the timings of his attacks are kind of complicated, kind of tricky. We can get this, though. We could definitely get this. This doesn't feel impossible.
I'll give it a couple more tries today. Like, how many more embers do we have? Two? Yeah, we'll give it two more tries. There we go. with anything lighter with slightly better lightning resistance yeah because I'm thinking we could go lighter here and then swap out Havel's ring for the uh, Thunderstone plate ring there we go whoops missed our souls not like it matters there's not a ton of them King of the Storm might be my favorite dragon design in the entire series. Oh my god, he actually hit me with it that time. Damn it. Should have rolled a bit closer to the body. Oh my god, really? I was doing so good the first couple of times against this, this creature. Oh man, this, this, this is not going to be the run. Always follows up with that, right? Okay. Here comes the fire breath. We can punish that. Mmm, my god, I'm doing so bad. I'm getting hit with everything, man. Christ alive! Well, that's it. Yeah, that wasn't a good run at all. Damn just got clocked by everything. How, how on earth did we go from one to the other? Let's, uh, let's try that again. I want to at least get to the Nameless King one more time. Is this that player that was hopping out? It's a different player. Thomas. Eh, not today. But probably tomorrow. Like Frida, this is another one of those kind of marathon battles. better. Uh-oh. Oh, still got me. Damn. Of course it did. There's the two-hit combo. I was able to dodge those attacks perfectly for the longest time. Again, the music here is fantastic. always get hit by the after effect or the the aftershock unless you're like right under it i think there we go There we go. Oh, we can actually get a visceral attack in on him. Nice. Okay. 
Okay, he's got several attacks like that. Yep, just roll under him. Oh my god, he can follow up everything with an attack. Okay. Well, friends, we are going to probably have to save this until tomorrow, because we just hit the three-hour limit, and uh, I'm afraid I do have some work to do later this afternoon. Uh, but, 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 we were able to make phenomenal progress today taking out Sister Freyda and Champion Gundir, both pretty easily. All we're going to have to do now is really practice this um, Nameless King fight a little bit tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is, off-screen at least, try to get us a few more embers to make sure we have enough resources to take him on, and we'll be back tomorrow after after Seth's stream. So I'll probably have an extended Labor Day stream running on into the night, consisting both of, or no, of all the following. This guy, the final boss of the game, which shouldn't be anything after what all we've gone through today, and the second DLC, as much of it as I can handle. Again, the second DLC is actually very long. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all so, so much for joining me. You've been an absolutely phenomenal audience. I, I really appreciate this little community we've built here. Uh, so until next time, thank you all once again so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.